That's where I would like this country to go to. Not where it was just two and a half years ago. Consumption, party after party, <laughs> living beyond our means. Absolutely. Just living beyond our means. That's suicidal to any society that consumes like that is suicidal. Go to Dubai, go to Abu Dhabi, go to Qatar. Ask them what their story is. They will tell you it was pain. Those were desert countries, camels, deaths, trading in, in salt. But they said, no, we have to work in a different way. Today you all rush to Dubai for holidays. Someone had to work hard to deny themselves consumption. Fellow citizens, Minimum wage has been increased to support societies that need that the most. Pay as UN has been adjusted. All those that in that bracket are not paying tax. Any tax around pay as UN. That's deliberate to alleviate the pressure as we go through the economic restructuring. After all, it's for social benefits. In order to implement our programs effectively and not to be just talkers, the President has initiated two tools. One is a public-private dialogue forum so that the public sector and the private sector can work together. And a few days ago, I'm pleased that I presented a message at the second public-private dialogue platform in Lusaka, where the private sector and the public sector felt that since that tool was introduced, Working together, taking rigidities, that slow down investment, that slows down support for the people, is beginning to show its fruit. A list of things that have been submitted by the private sector. To give you one work stream, the financial services work stream, all of those lists have been addressed, 100%. And they are now operationalized. That's walking the talk. I know you don't see it in your daily life, but I see it myself. If you care, you will see it. But if you don't see it now, you will see it soon. I'm confident about that. Tourism had their checklist, and I will talk about it under the tourism area. And you see the benefits that we have achieved through that too. Agriculture had a number. We've moved on some. you see that. I'll say, I'll talk about it very briefly. The second tool we put in place is the presidential delivery unit to make sure that the public sector works to resolve problems, economies for the people. Anyway, it's as simple as that. These tools are supportive. They are not replacing ministries. They are not competing with ministries. I see things there, but to get there, we have to do certain things here. When I ask citizens, Public sector workers, ministers, PSCs, secretary of the cabinet, I talk to him every other day to support these two tools and you will see the benefits very soon. Things we don't agree, we have agreed how to work through them together. That was missing, colleagues in this country. This organized way of working, orderly way of working time-bound way of working. That's what changes economies. 
go to any economy that's functioning well, they go through systems, orderliness, methodical way, intentional, but also focusing on delivery. Not just meetings and workshops and merrymaking. No. Processes should work to deliverables. So deliverables are more important than processes. I know civil society will argue with me and say process protects content. First, you must be clear of the outcomes. That's what this carbon is doing. Colleagues, we inherited an economy which had plummeted growth from 6% to minus 2.8%. Despite these challenges we face, all these things we've said, the posture is that we're turning the corner. And numbers don't lie. This year we expect to grow, close the year, a few days from now, at growth of, from minus to a positive growth of 4.3%. Therein lies the story of all this rambling I'm doing. Ultimately, the numbers will tell us what's going on. The pain is there, yes. 20, 0, 2024, we expect, with debt restructuring concluded, we expect to now start scaling up growth. And to me, that's a home run. That's a home run. But we have to do it together. It, it's hard. It's painful. But we have to do it together. Mining. Very important to our economy historically. Very important. We will continue to drive the changes that are necessary towards achieving our three million tons of copper. But we have also altered our agenda. We don't want to just achieve three million tons. We want to value add here. We want to process our minerals here. We also don't want to encourage investors who bring capital. When they do so, they must bring it at a fair price. We made our case very clear. Most of you watched my presentation in Paris in June at a summit which we called Reform of the Global Financial System. As a key speaker there, I, I made a case of Zambia and Africa, that Africa, Zambia, Africa cannot continue paying the highest price of capital. It's conscripting growth. That message is being heard now. Not just me, a couple of other Af African presidents and friends, our own institutions, ADB, to mention one, World Bank, IMF, EU itself. So we want the capital to come in our sectors, including mining, at a fair price. So we don't push the cost of doing business. Secondly, we want the best technology. Three, we want joint ventures. This is what your government is now doing. Not just say, but doing. You will see just now what I'm going to mention to you. Processing here will give us quicker growth. That's why I'm positive that once we've unlocked this debt, you see higher growth rates with hard work. So, we embarked on unlocking KCM. We announced that transaction some time back. And the processes are going through to get KCM to contribute to return to full production, even more, given assets such as the Concola Deep Mining Project. For some of us from the Coppola, we understand what that project means. The whole night we've been exchanging notes. I'm surprised the Minister of Mines is seated here. I thought you were sleeping by now. Seriously, because the whole night they were.
working the minister of money. Minister of Justice, I see you there. <laughs> Not close at my edge. But they're willing to take in advice. The point is, I'm making, don't misunderstand me. The point I'm making is that we must deliver. That's the point I'm making. We shouldn't be talking about meetings and more meetings. We should be talking about delivery, meetings that to support delivery. Can I highlight the test of the transaction, Minister? Am I allowed to do that? Or the stock exchange will give me trouble? Very good. So what we're waiting for is the Lusaka Stock Exchange and Securities Commission to clear the transaction because that's the law. But I can say the shareholder. <laughs> can I? No, no, be honest with me. Don't, don't just say yes because the president is asking you. Pass me or not. And I hope before I close, we'll be able to get a clearance and I will let the public know through you at least the basic parameters of the transaction and how we've changed things from when we found them. Increase, I can say so, increase participation of the Zambians. We're not going to be observers in the mining sector. We are taking substance now which is what it should have been, and not be Cinderella partners. And Minister, you are free to take a, a walk outside, call. Immediately that clearance comes, walk back in here. Thank you for your understanding. But as you go, I want to thank the Minister and his team, and all of us who are working on these difficult transactions. Again, we inherited these transactions. They were not handled properly. Thank you. You may proceed. I'll be checking out for you. <laughs> now, the meaning of that, we get KCM with a lot of difficulties. Back in production, more jobs. We get Mopani back in full production, more jobs. More supply contracts for our people, opportunities. Surprise, surprise. Shaft 28, in Luansha. It has been non-operational for 20 years plus. After our China trip, we negotiated, lobbied, CNMC came in, and as we speak, the investments have started to bring back Shaft 28 in Luansha into production. Over $1.5 billion is going into Chapter 28, Rwanda Mine. I want to thank our partnership with China. And the projection is that direct and indirect jobs, once it's in full gear, will be over 3,000 citizens working there. A town which was dying. Before we took office, Rwanda was dying. I'm not talking about what may happen. I'm talking of what is happening. That's the difference. Banavahes. I'm saying brothers and sisters. Don't describe me differently <laughs> after the press conference. <laughs> so, that is good news. That's why we are positive that despite the problems, we shall overcome. Working together, all of us. Attitude in life is the most important thing. I say that to my children. If you project an attitude that things are difficult, you will never achieve anything. Things are doable, but not pretentiously. You have to work, as they had to work overnight. 
That's my call to the people of Zambia. So, let me also indicate, some of you have been saying, oh, what is he doing in America? What is he doing in China? There's just one we're doing in China. We'll talk about Tazara soon, not here. As we sign, because we're working hard. Tanzania, China, Zambia, working very hard. We'll talk about the Lobito Corridor, more. The Minister of Transport is not here. I think he's still in uh, Angola. We'll talk about the North West Trail. First time, Madam Vice President, since Cecil Roads, what was the Rhodesia Railways, since KK's Tazara, we will be the only government, third government, in fact, second independent government, to construct a new rail line. But this is not for today. I will come to you and say we have now effectively reached this level. No more stories, but deliveries. Hard work. But let me say, one of our trips going to the States, I've been to the States three times the last two years, four months, was to negotiate a transaction to get the best technology to come to Zambia for exploration. And this government is putting more money in exploration anyway. It's there in the 2024 budget. Our own money, your money. So we know what we're sitting on. And when we can manage it better, we can attract partners better. And negotiate better. It's been really negotiating in the dark. You're negotiating, you don't know what you're sitting on. Latest technology to explore what we're sitting on and the preliminary result shortly will be sitting on one of the largest copper mines in the world. <laughs> technology, partnerships. I talked about partnership earlier. It's there. Under what was called the Lubambe mine, which are the large license. That's our new approach again. You have a large license, you're not ex utilizing it, the country needs to utilize it. So you need to come to us to say, what are you doing to explore on that whole license? Just within that tenement, this huge mine will come through. Are you doubting that will achieve three million tons too? Two and a half, two years, not two and a half, two years, four months. All of what I'm saying. Colleagues, let's put things in context. Why didn't we do that the last 20 years? Why didn't we do that the last 10 years? It's called clarity of what you want. Then you work towards it. Let me leave this very nice subject. But I'm waiting for the note from the minister. <laughs> and I will definitely say it. But we are good. Where we are today, with the clearances we're expecting, we are good. We are good. Tourism. Remember I talked about PPDF. We agreed with the private sector that one of the things that is holding back tourism, which has a huge potential for job creation and growth, was the cost of doing business. Bureaucracy, restrictions. I'll just pick one, visas. In the 2023 budget, after deliberating in the public-private dialogue forum,
with the tourism business in this country. For me, this is visa fees. We removed visa fees. And today I'm proud to tell you that the tourism business is shooting up. Tourist arrivals have increased. From where you are here, go outside and try and book a flight to Livingston, you will have no seat. The flights are full because of, among some, the removal of the visa fees. And we had arguments with some people, ah, oh, we're going to lose revenue. That's not how to look at business economy. Calculate the revenue you get from visa fees is this much. The revenues we are getting now by increasing occupants in the hotels, in the rooms, in the restaurants, in the laundry area, in the restaurants, as I said, but outdoor activities, the revenue you get is this much. Compare that with this much. You don't have to be trained in our area. You just need common sense. And your answer lies there. So the effect of removing the visa fee, amongst other measures, has seen an exponential growth in tourism. The numbers are showing there. You see that in the private business. I know one airline, friends of mine, and sometimes people accuse me of wrong things. Never in that direction. That private airline has now been able to buy three more planes since we removed the visa because the demand on movements has grown. That's how the economy grows, fellow citizens. There's no other way. It does not matter who bought planes, but someone has bought planes and is carrying tourists and they are buying rooms, they are paying, buying food, they are paying for laundry, and they are consuming mineral water, and jobs are increasing in that sector. That's where we are going. Not a story, real. After this press conference, talk to somebody who is in the sector, they'll give you the numbers. We can do more in tourism. I want to encourage citizens to do local tourism. Go and see sites. Go to Cassaba Bay with your family, with your loved ones this festival period. I know Cassava Bay is not what it is, but it will be better. With what we're doing there, it will be better. We're going to increase, we're increasing investment in this year's budget coming budget. We have put more money to uplift Cassava Bay Airport and facilities, to uplift Mansa Airport, to uplift Chinsali Airport, Northern Security. However, I learned that the segregation in the investments in this country, the pudding is here. You can eat it. You can test it. Choma is another one. And we'll continue until all the provincial airports are done. The money is in the budget for 2024. I think it's just been approved. Yesterday I was signing money bills. There you are. So you see change. A lot of change. You may not see it now, but I can see it. If you care to look, you will see it. So let's be positive as a nation. Social media must carry these narratives. media colleagues. You can vet best on what we are discussing. As we deliberately as a government are promoting conferences, international conferences to be hosted here. Just half a month ago, for the first time since Ikasa, you can work out your numbers, years when Ikasa was. Lusaka was full. All the lodges in Lusaka were full. And as 
Center for Disease Control, African Union Corporation, ourselves, when we hosted the CDC conference. You saw me presenting right here. Maybe it's close to a month now. Madam Masebo, is it a month or close to a month now? A month now. We filled all the Lusaka lodges for about 10 days. You couldn't find a lodge. Deliberate. We lobbied to get that conference here. Actually, it's the first time or second time it's happening on the African continent. Madam Masebo. Second time. But never happened in Zambia. The argument was that Zambia is not suitable. Why is Zambia not suitable? You just didn't lobby. We are lobbying and it came here. And the lodges were full. You know what that means. That's our agenda. Deliberate. Didn't happen by chance. Now we realize we don't have enough rooms in Lusaka. I think it's only how many rooms? 5,000? 3,000? Less than 3,000 rooms, bed spaces in Lusaka. Now we realize we need more facilities and there's an opportunity. We need more conferencing facilities. There's an opportunity. We need more seats on planes. We don't have enough seats on our planes. Put together. Therein lies the story that something is happening here. Tourism. Colleagues, local government, will continue driving decentralization. We will continue driving the decentralization agenda. That's what we said in opposition. That's what we're doing. We want to take services closer to the people. Lusaka is not Zambia. Mansa is Zambia. Solwezi is Zambia. Chipata is Zambia. Lundazi is Zambia. Kashinakaji is Zambia. Shangombo is Zambia. We're taking the resources away from Lusaka to the local areas. Deliberate, intentional. To support that, that's why we've increased CDF. I'm sure you're wondering why. That's the reason. Take out this money from the big thieves in Lusaka. I will never stop talking about that. The big gluttonous thieves in Lusaka who for many years were the only ones accessing public resources because all the contracts were given from Lusaka. All contracts, road contracts, were given from Lusaka. For a contract to be done in Porokoso, you needed to get it in Lusaka. To do a 10-kilometer road, gravel road in Porokoso, the contract was given here. What about the people in Porokoso? They are Zambians, then. That is the thrust of this government's policies. We said it in opposition. We are doing it. We are walking the talk. CDF, 30.6 million. In there is many facilities, including creating capacity at a local level. I saw one opposition leader. I don't answer, but I look, I see, I hear, I internalize, I say, shame. And you were saying on prime television that this CDF, this thing can't work because the decisions for CDF are made by the MP. And the council must be the one managing CDF. And I called the Minister of Local Government, can you answer that fellow? I don't want to answer myself. CDF is administered at the local level, at the district council level. That's why now you are seeing local capacity for feeder roads to be done in all the 116 constituencies. The constituencies that haven't created that capacity is what I want to say today. Opposition colleagues do not stand in the way of development for the people. A constituency, a district... Con <laughs> Thank you very much. A constituency or district controlled by the opposition should not suffer to have no greater, no bulldozer, because that district, the council, councillors are from opposition. That decision was made by the people of Zambia when we voted. Now is to deliver development. 
That's what we are supposed to do. We will talk to each other around those issues in 2026. And I urge my colleagues in parliament, all parliamentarians, UPND, PF Independent, let's work together. This is another area of unity. We don't need to pull each other on the delivering capacity to the local region. This is our policy. That's why we won elections. That's why Zambians gave us an opportunity. You had your opportunity. You manage your opportunity differently from us. Allow us to manage our opportunity based on what we say to the people of Zambia. I'm serious. But let's work together. We shall compete again in 2026. For me, seated here, I will work with a councillor from PF, an MP from PF, an MP who is independent. I'm working with them. We're working with them. We're working with them. a mayor or council chairman from any political party. The common interest there. So you will see that where there are no graders mostly and road equipment is in opposition areas. We give the delegated authority to create priorities, you stand in the way of development. Secretary of Cabinet, I saw you here. Avena Kangwa, you and I are talking about this issue call in a meeting call a meeting to send this message back. you may take your seat sir all PSCs let's deliver for the people have a meeting with whoever is in the local authority it does not matter which party they come from they need support give them support because you are supporting the people that's all I think we should change our attitudes. I come back to attitudes. Citizens, we know that we have to do a lot to improve delivery through CDF. We know that. We understand. And we welcome your comments, your advice. Part of what we're doing to change the local government laws that relate to CDF, because they, they, were, they belong to an order that was different where there was no focus on decentralizing. By the way, decentralization has been talked about for the last 30 or 50 years, but no one moved. We have moved. No other government moved. We have moved. First time to do it that way. It's even shocking people. Equalization funds are being dispersed. By the way, again I saw someone say in writing that CDF money is not equally distributed. That's far from the truth. Please. The 2022 CDF money was in full disbursed to all the constituencies. The 2023 will be disbursed to all the constituencies equally, unlike what was happening in the past. That's a fact. It's there. Numbers don't lie. Check the bank accounts before you issue a strong statement condemning your own government that there's segregation in CDF, there's zero. What is there is slowness in using the CDF money. That's what we're working on now. And that's why we're changing the law to facilitate quicker disbursement of CDF. Equalization funds are moving on time. Councils are paying their salaries now as opposed to what was happening in the past. Council workers are being paid. If a council is not paying workers, it has other problems. And we should examine those problems. Chief's policies are being constructed. It was a story. When we first talked about this, I know my dear friends in the opposition said, ah, hmm, mafia Tafika Moneke. We launched the construction of chief's palaces in Luapula 
last month. If not early this month. I think it's early this month. Chief Schmenzer, our chief in Mansa, was where the launch took place. And our target is that our partners, traditional leaders who live with the people, who are not competitors to us but complementary, will now be living in distant homes and conduct. their work in such improved environments. It's happened. To build 15 palaces, they didn't complete it. We're doing about for funding will take us into 125 palaces. Distance for our chiefs, good house, water, reticulated water, flush toilet. Anywhere in this country, you find a palace where put it will have a flush toilet, waterborne toilet. Madam Marcel, sanitation, never done before in this country. We are doing all this before debt restructuring. No longer to appreciate debt restructuring. Figure by Shang. We are not just accommodating chiefs, we are accommodating capacitors too at the palace. Institutional palaces. Not where somebody dies, there is a fight. Nowhere to operate from. Succession. May not go there. That's for another day. I can go on, colleagues. Let me move quickly through law and order, plus legal reforms. We shall continue walking this path of law and order. There's no walking back. We will reinforce this. We are reinforcing and will continue. If anybody thinks that this is just mere talk, you are on your own. Order in the markets, in the bus stops. Zambians have already forgotten that markets and bus stops were places of blood every week. Zambians have forgotten that pangas were the, the way we lived in Simonson building area there. It was pangas every day. Every day. It was blood every day. So we to market there, a widow took 10 boxes of tomatoes to sell. Two or three boxes were grabbed by, by thugs in the name of a political party. PF to be specific. UPND, if you do that, I'll forget who you are. I'll forget who you are. I have seen some slippages there. Some of our members trying to emulate those bad habits. You will be out of line. The police are instructed. I see the Minister of Home Affairs is here. There is no segregation. Law and order. I see a UBND official here. If you encourage our members to do those things, I will forget you. My duty is to save the people of Zambia. That's our constitutional democracy. We didn't like it under PF, we should not tolerate it under UPND. That's the message. That is the message. And there's no decent UPND member who can say they were enjoying what was happening because they were victims, they were being beaten every day. You wore a red shirt, even a Barclays Bank uniform, you got lynched. APSA. Not Barclays, APSA. You wore a Zanako red t-shirt, you got lynched. Especially if you walked around Simonson building there. You were dead meat. How can you now want to emulate that? Honestly speaking, Vice President, 
No one will be allowed to do that in the name of UPND. If you do that, you are not a genuine UPND member. You are masquerading as a UPND member. Because if you are genuine, you know that we suffered a lot. People got beaten there. There's a woman in Lusaka West called Mrs. Lima who has a store in Soweto. Every time her store was a bloody area because she's such a tough cookie that one. You remember a lady, a lady in Woodlands who was just trading there and where the UPND Chitenge in and out, she was being lynched. Today I'm proud that we found her better facilities. Personally, I'm giving her support. Such a diligent lady. So don't lie in the name of UPND. Don't do wrong things. Deputy Secretary General of UPND, if you encourage our people to, 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 to do those things, you should not be in that chair. You are the wrong person sitting there. Because we can't encourage our young people to do exactly what we did not like done on us. I'm emphasizing this point. I'm watching. I'm following. Grabbing land from people? No. There's lawlessness. But we work towards creating land for all citizens. Before you never got land, if you are not PF. I understand the pain UPND went through. But it's not just UPND, it's citizens overall. So let's not go back to those days. I'm saying it for the last time. Minister of Home Affairs, that is your domain. You don't need the president to step in. That is your routine responsibility. That's why you're a minister, you're fortunate to be a minister. Out of 20 million people, you are the Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security, you are a lucky man. You are a very lucky man. Equally, colleagues, no one will break the law in the name of being a political party leader. And when the law visits you, you start saying democratic space is gone. Civil society, don't buy those stories. No one should come to you to agitate you to go in the streets because their democratic rights have been taken away, yet they've broken the law. No. No, 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 no. No, citizens, no. That will not be tolerable. It will not be tolerated. Let's work within the law. That's how civilized societies work, within the law. So there's no political party leader, there's no party member or leader of any party, there's no civil society. I must say it here, Vice President, there's no pastor, there's no bishop who breaks the law and believes that they will run to the church to protect them. The law does not recognize a pastor and a reverend, a bishop, including an elder like me in the church. No. Told my wife, my children, you break the law, you go out in the bar. Well, they don't drink. Someday they decide to drink. You go and beat people in the bar. I am the one who will ask the police and remind them to arrest you. But you are my son. I'm not joking here. Because I see things, people think that these are words we play with. No. Law and order. There will be no investment without law and order. Today people peacefully go to a bus stop. And they've forgotten that Kulima Tower and ZNBC Director General. These are the stories you must go out, the narratives. Go and pick the footage of what was happening there and what's happening now. Then you'll be relevant national broadcaster. Tell the stories to the people. Going to intercity now, you take it for granted. That's, it, that's the way it is. No, it was not like that two years and six months ago. Madam Lois, that's what we should be doing, narratives, showing people. You're not being political. You're telling facts. I hope somebody's listening here. 
and we should never get back there. That's the point. We should never get back there. It's a no-go area for anyone. In that line, colleagues, Parliament has passed the law, access to information bill, which was never done in 20 years. That bill has been passed. And I'm glad to say to you, I'll be signing it here, right here today. You will be the witnesses. As you know, the president can refuse to sign the law. And when the president refuses, it will not take legal effect. But I'm glad to tell you that I'll be signing it right here, once we're done. This government has passed the Child Court Act. Now it's law protecting our children. It was never done again over 20 years. Never done. This government has removed the death penalty. Never done since the history, creation of this nation, even under Roy Walensky in the colonial days. This is the first government to have the courage to do it. Sign that law. This government has removed the criminal defamation of the president. That's why you see people insulting the president every day. My view is that they will get tired very soon. There will be no political mileage. When the law was there, there was political mileage because when they insulted the president, the, the police visited them. Now no one is visiting them. They will become irrelevant. It's their duty to act and conduct themselves properly, maturely. This was resisted in cabinet, but I said, let's do it. Since I'm the guinea pig, let's do it. We've done it. And you see some political party presidents, they've even stopped sending messages of their vision. It's just HH, Shan, Shan, Uko, long ones like this. Eh? That's a Tonga expression of big insults, we call them long one. Not necessary. Let's debate on the debt restructuring. Colleagues, the Attorney General's office is being decentralized. It's happening now. I think last month they were opening an office in Chipata. So there will be Attorney General chambers for our people to access law and legal services, not law and law, legal services, closer to them. It's happening under this government. Before we were told there's no money, you will always try and squeeze money to apply on your priorities. Because before a citizen had to get legal support from Attorney General Chambers, had to come to Lusaka. Now, you just go to your provincial headquarters for now. I want to indicate earlier on I was talking about debt, that we don't want to get to another debt crisis. What was happening in the previous 10 years is that a ministry will procure debt without the Minister of Finance knowing. That's cheap and tap and tap. No more of that stuff. This government now passed a law to control it. This government to control itself and future governments that no borrowing really nearly will happen again. That law has been in, passed in Parliament, and we've included a clause that you have to seek parliamentary approval in order to borrow. Is that not good? <laughs> Two years, four months. Two years, four months. I talked about hooliganism. No room for it from anyone. You can see now, even us in polit politician, political party leaders, we've become hooligans. Political party leaders have become hooligans. Now, what will become of society? Let me make a, a point clear. When we say no thugger in the markets, we are not saying citizens should not trade in the markets. They are all welcome to trade in the markets and local government must provide more spaces 
UPND cadres who are not allowed to operate in the markets, you can go and trade in the market. Any citizen should go and trade in the market. I wanted to make this point clear. But you will not be allowed to beat people in the market. You will not be allowed to take merchandise from a widow in the market. You will not be allowed to levy someone in the market. Only councils or market cooperatives collect levies. That's the message, because people like misunderstanding each other deliberately. We love you, our cutters. I'm a UBND cutter myself. I'm cutter number one. But why am I not beating people? I'm cutter number one. Why am I not beating people? Because it's against the law. So anyone should trade in the market. Anyone should use a bus stop. Anyone should get land. But those who got land illegally, it's being taken away. I shouldn't say it will be taken away. It's being taken away. I'm actually signing, I've signed a lot of uh, cancellations of illegal land, in case you don't know. I have. And when that land leaves the illegal owner, it will be available to all. That's what councils must do now. Give land to citizens. And citizens, when you get land, use it properly. Don't just sell it to a foreigner. If you sell it, sell it to another Zambian. After all, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice reminded me that you can't sell undeveloped land. The law does not allow. So, I needed to make a clarification. Because someone would run a narrative that UPND cadres are not allowed to trade in the market. PF cadres are not allowed to trade in the market. You are in the market as a citizen. And you respect other people in there. Is that difficult, honestly, colleagues? Is that difficult? Why is it being misunderstood? Why? Corruption fight continues. I know some thought that uh, it's losing steam. We are working. We are working. Minister of Justice is there. We've just passed two pieces of legislation. You can remind me what they are. You can shout there. There's one to do with local courts. Another one. What are those? can shout a little bit. The Criminal Procedure Code Amendment Act, the Penal Code Amendment Act, and the Subordinate Code Amendment Act. Three laws I signed yesterday. Just yesterday, these three laws. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And these three laws now allow us to do things we were not able to do in the last two years and four months. You will see speed now in the fight against corruption. You will see amendment, procedures being amended because the law has been amended. Now procedures such as, if you are engaged in corruption, going forward, before it took 20 years, there's a case which was only concluded, which started under the late Manawasa. It was only concluded this year. You can count the years. With those three pieces of legislation which were standing in the way, and the accompanying procedures now that will be done, operating procedures, guidance notes. If you engage yourself in corruption, or you did, you will now be tried within five months. I know there were some who were buying time, and they were even celebrating, throwing parties that, uh, oh, we'll wait because we will delay in court. And after 2026, Ale Lapo will now allow us to continue. There is no Ale Lapo. There is nothing like that. There is no waiting. That's the point I'm making. Ale Lapo can wait if the people want. That's a different subject. The subject I'm confronting now is that there is no waiting for Ale Lapo. 
you will be tried. You are going to be tried now, within five months. The cases will close. Took us long to amend the law. Also, you will notice, I've asked the colleagues in these oversight institutions, to be organized. There's been a lot more asset recoveries. Not long ago, there were about seven or eight expensive properties in Chadli, Chadli or Munali. How many? Uh, Twelve. Twelve. I think some of you saw them on social media. A lot of that is happening. This government is focusing on asset recoveries as well, because the value lies there as well. There is, there is, there is a deterrence, but there is also a recovery, so that the assets return to you people who are the owners. But we have also put in place a mechanism now to have a proper asset manager. We don't want those properties to rot. We want them to gain value, to earn income. Luckily, all of them are occupied already. I think I'm right. There's rental income. That's your money, which quietly were recovered. This government is doing a lot of quiet work. We are not as good enough in publicity. We have to change that. Citizens need to know. If the citizen knew the recoveries that we are we, we, we achieving, bulldozers, bulldozers, graders knew. See how people were playing with people's money. But they couldn't grade feeder roads, but they were buying graders. Then you ask, why would you buy a grader and pack it in your yard? What is it doing in your yard? Because when you took money which is not yours, you didn't know how to use it, isn't it? So you will see speed in there. I want to commit to the citizens. It's happening already. Energy. We have made a lot of moves. Diversifying energy. Hydro, solar, all of us. I won't waste your time. We've signed a lot of agreements. Our focus now is to implement. So we can move our target is energy surplus. For our needs, yes, but for export. Please, citizens, don't resist. when you see your country exporting power is earning for the next great opportunity so implementation climate change climate change we created the Ministry of Green Economy climate change, environment we were elected chair of the SADC, not SADC, the Africa Group of Negotiators on Climate Change. First year in office, we got elected by the citizens. We were then elected on the African continent to chair. I've been chairing that platform with other African countries working through us. The Minister of Green Economy has been doing the work on this team. And we are proud to say that at the last COP in Dubai, just the one which is concluded, we have been able to move the climate change agenda, including achieving, the, if you like, the lost and damaged fund. Now the Western world will damage the environment more. And I've been talking about setting up a fund. It was never set up under our chairmanship. That fund has now been set up, and I think half a billion dollars has gone into it. First time. I want to congratulate the Minister of Green Economy and his team and his counterparts on the African continent, his counterparts in the global community, who gave us the opportunity to serve for two years and to achieve these milestones. What else have we done now? We have agreed that we will not enter into carbon market, carbon credit, please media, hear me right. Because the market is not structured, the market is polarized, 
there's a lot of living value on the table. So we have agreed now that as Africa and our chair and the developing world, we will now structure the market working with the first world so that we know what to define this market, number one. Number two, we will agree the pricing of carbon. This is not a small issue, colleagues. The pricing of carbon. Today, the price of carbon, if you don't know what you're doing, Bamwewa, you will sign a carbon trade. This is your summary. It's done. It's done. Yes. Okay. You can mark. You can mark the relevant points. We have summarized it. Okay, you just mark the relevant points. Okay. Just mark. You can take it away. Okay. Mark when you are through. Use this pen. Sorry, we are working in front of you. You can go and mark the key points and bring them. Thank you, Minister. This is the way we are twisting the work in the public sector. Work was always for tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own programs. It's today. So I'm saying the second thing is the pricing of carbon. Bamwe, if you have a farm or a village where you have a forest, some company from the first world will come and say, let's sign a carbon credit. And you sign, and they'll pay you $20. The, the West is $8 per ton of carbon, carbon dioxide. But the price is up to $110 per ton. So Zambians and other countries need protection. If you only sign for $20 per ton, it means literally, literally $90 has been left on the table. So now the pricing will be clear, number two. Number three, the sharing of the revenue. ZNBC Director General, I watch your news. When you give a news clip that this has been said by X, before that news and the meaning and message is completed, you cut the clip. So why did you alert the viewers that there is this message? Complete the news. I'm, I, I know why people are smiling. I think you agree with me, isn't it? Complete the news. That trading in carbon now be structured, anchored on three things. Clear market understanding. What is the carbon you are trading in? How do you calculate it? What's the price? Which ranges between $8 per ton to $110. We want to get 110 If we fail, we want 100 Three, revenue sharing. The communities that live around there, we must distribute some money to them. That's what we've been working on. And you should see going forward more value, more resources coming into the country as we do climate change mitigation measures. Plant more trees, colleagues. Local government, constituency, families, plant more trees. You see the rain pattern now. You've seen. It's a climate damage, climate change. So, it's very important that we address these issues. Extremely important. Agriculture. Simple. Trust. Produce more for our own consumption, for the region, for Africa, for the global community. Produce more. That's our agenda. Expanded agriculture support program. You heard about it in the early days of our government. This is what it means to produce more. We have set targets to produce 10 million tons of maize. Journalists, please. We have set our targets on which? Clear targets. And to achieve that, we want more investments in agriculture. We are already doing it. How are we doing it? Feasible continue with improvements. But we have opened what we call the agricultural credit window. It was a story before, it's now in reality. Not safe, 
Absa, Sanako, anyone from agriculture here. And many other banks have now uptaken this credit window and they are lending to support FISIP, to support other farmers. There are two million plus farmers who need FISIP. The government cannot, under these conditions, support all of them. We are supporting 1,025,000. 1,025,000. What about the rest credit window? Real. It's not a story. Within the economic difficulties we inherited. Disbursements have started. And we are now saying, even civil servants must produce food. When you are in your office, your small holding must be doing something. You must be planting something. You already have a boho there. That's my request to citizens. You sit on a 10 acre, don't use it as a residence only. You already have a boho, you have electricity. Irrigate just one hectare. Just one hectare. Even journalists, just one hectare. And we want to increase productivity, produce more per hectare. Instead of 2.8 tons per hectare, this government wants and is working to, with the farmers and farmers' union to produce 7, 8 tons per hectare. With climate change, irrigation is the answer. We still have the water, citizens. And if on one hectare you produce nine tons, as Zambif does, Zambif Mpongwe farms produce nine thousand, sorry, nine tons of maize per hectare. And this year alone, before I go there, and then wheat, second crop, two crops per year, same hectare. Before you go out to cut more trees, use the field that you have already to produce more. This year alone, Zambia produce, is producing, has produced 40,000 tons of wheat. 10% of the national production. One farmer. Imagine if we had 100 Zambifs. Would we be having issues with wheat? On the same field, they've now planted maize and they'll be producing 9 tons or 8 tons of maize per hectare. If you have only two hectares, you produce eight tons, you have 16 tons. How much maize do you eat in your households? How much millimeter do you eat in your households? This much. This much on one hectare you sell. The price of millimeter will stabilize. That's what we've been saying. Why can't we get that message? Why are we resisting? Because we're used to just sitting and someone is doing producing and the farmers produce, you don't want to be paid for their production, you just want to eat. We shouldn't be a nation of consumers. We should be the national producers as well and processors. That's a shift I would like to see in this country. So that's our trust. We have improved the price to farmers. Spot payment before you you got a, a voucher and you got paid six seven months after delivering your, your your crop. Now you get paid there and then a good price. You get paid there and then. We planned this. It hasn't come by chance. We planned it. It's happening now. If it wasn't the poor season this year, citizens were geared to plant more. And I'm still encouraging the rain areas plant more. Northern Luapula. Muchinga, Northwestern, Northern parts of Central Province. Journalists, you can produce on one hectare only, and the excess you sell. You enhance your income from the salary you get as a journalist, and there will be less comp.
complaints on social media. Million tons will be able to sell seven million tons. We have already got a market. Your government and for the first time has a market. Before farmers produced there was market and they lost money. Now we've gone out to them dollars per ton for the export market. I'm careful with the words I'm using. We will earn, do your calculator, we will earn 3.5 billion dollars of new export revenue from just maize alone. Now we have achieved the point where the price of wheat and the price of maize are at par. That's why you saw that farmers had left maize, had gone to soybeans, had gone to wheat. Now we have brought the market distortions, we have cleaned the market distortions, and you make money on maize. So go and do it. Civil servants, we have given you a loan scheme where you are only paying 9% interest. To invest in agriculture. Go and do it. Don't run away from the office and sneak out. Employ somebody on your small holding to produce. Create jobs. Maybe you will learn what it is to run a payroll. Yes, it's important. People learn the basic tools. I tell my children, you must learn Tamanga first, where you buy cement, where you buy seed, where you buy deep chemical, where you buy... When you learn Tamanga, you will understand the bigger businesses. Because the theme is the same. These are keys we have gone through invest. But I said, no, first, go and buy cement. cha cha, -cha road. Take this deep to the farm. Then you will understand. Because when the worker claims that they are using so many liters of dip, you say, no, 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 Icona, you are lying. In this dip tank, we can only use so much. You learn. So, don't steal government time. Employ someone. One, two, three, four. You become an employer. People will depend on you. You become, you see the difference when you are responsible for people and when you are just earning a salary. You see the difference yourself, and you begin to appreciate what needs to be done. Are you not happy, citizens? When we came into office, we said we will not continue importing fertilizer. I am proud to say to you today that in this season, we did not import vessel dressing. All of it was manufactured in Zambia within the two years. <laughs> two years, four months, set our eyes on domestic production. We now have a company, German ambassador, private company, who we encourage, who we are supporting. When we started doing that in 2022 season, people were saying this government is corrupt because we said we'll buy from the local producers, value addition, jobs. Over a thousand jobs have been created there. And our brothers and sisters are working. And someone raised a finger to say, no, no, this is corruption. I can't, man. There's no corruption there. It's intentional. It's deliberate to buy from local manufacturers. Positive discrimination. And this year will be enough. Ask me what next has happened. In COP, Two weeks ago, or 15 days ago, we were chatting, five presidents, we were chatting. President Masiso Boswana, President Edgar Agegengo of Namibia, President um, um, Nangagwa of Zimbabwe, President Nyusu of Mozambique, 
Ah, I forgot. We were six. President uh, Makiso of Senegal and myself just chatting before a session. And we started talking about buying from each other. And President Masiz said, HH, can you be fair and praise me? I said, why should I praise you, President Masiz? He says, I imported fertilizer from Zambia and I'm very happy with the quality of fertilizer from Zambia. <laughs> it starts from Ichimonwa. Then you take it down to reality on the ground. It's what your government is all about. Under difficulties. Immediately, President Yusuf said, is there more? I would like to place an order. Why do I have to wait for fertilizer from overseas? I said, I'll check for you. President of Namibia said, I too want to buy. President of Zimbabwe said, ah, oh, my brother, you are my neighbor. Why don't you supply me with fertilizer? Isn't that good? We should do more. This lady here went to put a foundation stone on the production of fertilizer plant just after we formed government. And she was criticized. Eh? We were criticized. It came from there. This year I went to put a foundation stone for the top dressing. And 2024, the plant will start producing top dressing fertilizer. I invite more investors, foreign investors, Zambian investors, let's work together. But more jobs, more economic contribution. That's what we're looking for. That's where our eyes are. I must also say, by taking that move in 2022 season, we paid $1,200 per ton for fertilizer. Because of this move, we have now, this year, we are able to pay only 800, around $800 per ton. You work out the numbers. We have saved. That's how an economy is built. There's no other way. Jonah, that's how economies are built, my brother. So we want to see this story. The journalists should help this country to send the right stories, the right narrat narratives out there. That's what we're looking for. ZNBC, Prime, Diamond. We are partners. I am very proud also to announce today, as your servant, that given the climate change issues we had last year and this year now, because last year we had drought and floods in the same season, this year is not promising. We asked some farmers to come on early maize. And I'm proud to say that we are expecting by March somewhere close to 50,000 metric tons of early maize. I'll be going to inspect it in some of the farms who have signed up with the government program to bring early maize on stream without waiting for May and June. We should do more. It's real, it's there. I'd like the journalists to come with me when we take that trip. As they came to, you came with me in Nyimba to launch the planting season. And I said there, and I said here, there will be no planting season. Every month will be a planting month. Every month will be a harvesting month. I said feasible continued credit window is here to stay. Irrigation is a must. Land use, let's use all our land. Livestock, let's give it support. Health, Minister, you are here. Health serves delivery. We committed to the people. When we came into office, we inherited a difficult situation with drug supply. And it was talk every day. One day I said to the minister there, are you sure you really want to continue as Minister of Health? She's there. And I said that to her. I said, tomorrow I'm coming to your office. I spent the whole morning in our office different way of working 
and she was very smart. She called in all the provincial, what do you call them, madam? All the provincial health directors were on uh, on a virtual platform. And we had a meeting with all of them, plus her, her PSCs, myself, to say, what is the issue? You are on the ground. There isolated those issues. We began to work on them one by one. And today you sit here, I'm proud to say we sit here. Thank you, Minister, and the team. Thank you. Two years, four months. It was a cancer in the health sector. We still have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. But we're getting there. Shorter delivery times. Apply three principles. Buy at the right price. Two, quality must be right. Three, deliver on time. So what levels of availability are we now? Eighty to ninety percent. And I don't see people now complaining. There will be always one or two cases. out there. It's deliberate, but we can do more. More impact here, then we'll do what we've done. More jobs, more business opportunities for supply of goods and services. That's how you grow an economy. Difficult as it is. in terms of what we inherited. It's there for everybody to see. We can do that. You can have drugs if the doctor and nurse is not there. You have a problem. If the clinic is not there, if you have no maternity wing, our mothers, I was delivered myself in a grass thatch house. My, my grandmother was a midwife. It cannot continue like that. That's why we've set targets of maternity wings at every health center, plus reticulated water. And our mothers can deliver in a healthier environment, save the mother, save the child. This is your government. You may think it's a story, ask her. She's got a database now. Where is there maternity wing? any part of the country, where do we need to construct? Where we need to construct, we use the central health budget, we also use the CDF. Back to the seats, to decentralization. Health is a critical area of decentralization. Because if we can't take the sick to the health center, health workers, when you are given an opportunity to be employed and you are posted to Chama, stay in Chama. If you leave Chama, you want to come back to Lusaka to see someone or somebody, boyfriend, girlfriend, then you are sending a message to us that you don't want a job. And I'm asking the Minister of Health, at that point, we should take away that job, give it to someone else who is willing to work in China. This is not a joke. These young people are employed, they go to a location, they register everything, they start getting a salary, they come back into town. Yes, it takes two to tango. Attitude one. Two, where there is no house, there is no water, we are putting houses and water. So they must provide a service there. Teachers is the same. But we also have a policy of uniting families. 
That's what we've said already. And we'll continue on that policy. We can't do everything in one day. It takes time. It takes time. Education. We said it in opposition. Education is the best investment, inheritance, equalizer. We live by those words. Some of us are products of that. That's why we've introduced free education. It's working. There are more kids in schools now. Good challenge. When that obtains, what do we do? More classroom space. Are we building? Yes, we are. More teachers. Are we recruiting? Yes, we are. Teachers is the same. Stay in your posting. We are connecting internet to all schools. Minister Mutati, is he here? Anyone from technology? Cabinet office, I think you are aware. We are connecting internet to all secondary schools, government secondary schools, to make e-learning possible. All of them, without exception. A year ago, some of you remember I talked about internet connectivity. I talked about Starlink. You thought it was a story. Starlink is here now. It's here. You can send money, mobile money now to Shangobo, to Kashinakash. Easy to install. Even a nine-year-old young person can install the Starlink equipment. I have it on my ranches. So we are putting it in schools. I think the MPs know that all constituencies are now going to get from central government free Starlink connection. All the constituencies. So that the children in the rural areas are not left behind in learning. Now we can have e-learning, e-health, mobile money, which we are taking for granted. Fellow citizens, two years, four months. The initial plan, I wish the Minister of Communication, Transport, sorry, Technology and Transport and Communication was here. The initial plan was that we can only do it after five years. I said, Mutati, what did you say to me? He repeated, I said, I don't agree with you. Uh uh, I can't. We can do it better. We've done it. E agriculture. Now our farmer in Chama can learn how to improve productivity on the internet in Chama. That's a story, ZNBC. That's a story for which you need to send Zanis. Zanis, who, Madam Lois, you are Zanis. Send people. Go and challenge what the president has said. Is the internet in this course? Send a team. Not for allowances but to establish where the internet is there. The allowances are, are by the way. I hope you've gotten the message I'm giving you. Run that narrative on ZNBC, on Diamond, on, on Prime, on any other television. Let the citizens know that been to be Kinja. Things have changed. New curricula, you have seen it. We have noticed that we had no plumbers. The country was losing plumbers, losing carpenters, skills, losing welders. We have addressed it. Two years, four months. The curricula is being circulated now, which will allow young people at an early age to start studying agriculture, preparing to become farmers to start studying welding at an early age, brick laying. You don't run a country from the dark room, you run it from a lightened place. 
These things are all connected, colleagues. They are all connected. They are not in isolation. So, that curricula, please make comments. If you have a view, make comments. When a kid can't go to university, they are not failures. We shouldn't call them failures. We should encourage them to do an artisanal skill. Where will they do it? This government is investing. All the uncompleted trade schools, all the run-down trade schools, we are rehabilitating. All of them. And we are providing the funding for the kids at a local level, decided in the constituents to pick the kids who completed school seven years ago and they are seated because they didn't qualify to invest. And I went to Mansa Trades. I went to Secheke Trades just two months ago. And I hide my excitement because that's how God made me. I'm, I'm sorry. And inside I was singing quietly. When I saw these kids talking, how happy they are. That seven years they've been sitting, now they're in the trade school. They are sponsored, not just in the trade school, they are sponsored by the CDF fund. And they aspire to run their own business, small business. And we must make it possible for them. How? CDF contracts to build classrooms, to build Maternity wings must be given to those kids that are coming out of those schools. And that's why we're changing, we're changing the law on CDM. We're also changing, we've changed, not, not we are changing, we've changed the law on public procurement. Changing the law. Changing the law on public private partnerships on projects, on infrastructure. I signed these laws yesterday. Yesterday I signed. I reserved the one for access to information for today. I signed the others yesterday. Which will make it easier now, walking the talk, creating local economies with our own children who had lost hope in life. Two years, four months. Take your pick. Well, you may call us failures. I'm not. I'm not sure. On a on a scale of ten, what did we say we would do? What have we done? And the difficulties. I said more teachers, but also harmonising teachers. Some teachers are on a salary of a diploma holder for twenty years, even after they've gone for further studies. Minister is here. Now we have dealt with those issues. Minister, can I confirm we have dealt with those issues? Upgrading teachers. You are working on it, eh? You have started the process. Yes. A distortion which was there for years and years. No one paid attention to it. Desks. We pronounced Mr. Mwewa, we pronounced that we will not import desks. Controversial decision. Because some people were eating something from those contracts. Now we are making the desks here. Young people are making desks across the country. It's a story for Zanis to pick. Go across the country. Local raw materials, our own timber, our own carpenters, the desks are coming through. We set a target that no child should sit on the floor, and it's happening. Kids, orphan children in secondary schools who couldn't go to a boarding school, now they are, boarding, they are going to boarding schools. The man is there. Who decides? The local people. That kid is an orphan. That one is a single. That one is double orphan. That one the parents can't afford. They now decide to give them bursaries at the local level. Never happened before. In our time, all bursaries were obtained from Lusaka. 
Now it's happening in the constituencies. Equitably, colleagues, two years, four months. You know a kid who is going to secondary school in any part of the country and is not in a dark boarding school because there's no money, send in the information to the Minister of Education. And I would like to know who is that kid. And she, she or he will be on the bus. This is December. January, she will go back to school. January, that child will go back to school, to that secondary school. Is, not some, is that not something to celebrate? What are you going to celebrate then as a country? You can't celebrate the future of a kid who is out of school. In Mansa, I saw a 53-year-old woman who said, I got pregnant early and left school. I couldn't go back. Now, with free education, I'm back in school. I'm sure some of you saw that, that lady. 53-year-old. She's back in school. Good news, great news. Infrastructure we will continue under the difficulties that we're experiencing now. Public-private partnership projects away from the national balance sheet. We couldn't do anything on infrastructure because we're in debt, debt distress. We've used this tool, ingenious tool, to do a number of roads, better quality roads. Chingola, Chililabombe, Kasumbalesa Road. Go and have a look at it. Better quality at a much lower price than our colleagues were doing roads per kilometer. And delivered on time. That road has been delivered on time. You can go and check it again, journalists. Go and have a look there. But signed up for Ndola, Sakanya, Mufrira Road. Chibuluma Road. I saw a posting. By the way, I check a lot of postings on social media. I saw someone posting, what's happening to Chibuluma Road? Chibuluma Road is already being contracted. It's the first road we're testing on a concrete road because it's a heavy traffic road, heavy loads there, and it gets run down quickly. So we are now, we've given a contractor to do that road using concrete. Because concrete, we have the stones, we have the sand, or quarry dust, we have the cement. And the concrete road done properly, it will last 40 years without a portal. Good, good investment. So we are testing that on the Chibuluma Road in Kitwe. So I've been a couple of Nandi. Hmm. It's there. The works have started already. But you also know the second dollar road, highway. You have seen the work that has been done around, what is that place, around the, is that, not Bonamukubu, what is that, who knows dollar where we are? As you are entering dollar or leaving dollar to Lusaka, the quality, hmm? a lot of industries around there. Yeah, go and have a look at the quality of that road as a commencement area. And we're doing it, the whole Osaka and Dollar Road, which the PF had contracted to do at $1.3 billion, 327 kilometers, at $1.3 billion plus interest, $1.8 billion. We're going to do it in $650 million. It's there. You don't have to say maybe. No, it's there before debt restructuring. No manga to appreciate debt restructuring. That's a context. We will continue working, applying different resources. Earlier I talked about, I went to Kusepia Pangwena last year, and Mwine Luwemba asked me, said, this airport, HH, I've had children who have been presidents, ministers coming from this region. This airport has never been done. I said, Mwine Luwemba, you don't have to persuade me. This airport will be done.
this month I went to officially Chipata Chisali Chom the very people who created the dead mountain and when we try and negotiate German ambassador with yourself they say no HH and UPND government are stooges of German, are stooges of the imperialists. That's the narrative they use now. So me, I say, I'm no stooge of nobody. If you want me to be a stooge, I'm a stooge of the people of Zambia. That I agree. I'm a stooge of the people of Zambia. But we know what needs to be done. If you allow me to be a little bit naughty, if you call these people imperialists and they are evil, why did you go to borrow money from imperialists? Honestly, why did you go there? Didn't you know they were imperialists? But you signed. How do you expect to walk away from that? At least we are cleaning the mess. We think the world is a world of partnership. It's not the world of imperialists, it's not the world of bad people, it's the world of us knowing what we want as a country and then reaching out, negotiating. As we have negotiated as an IMF interest-free facility. We negotiated. Why didn't PF get it? Why? Uh -uh. This is not a joke. We should not be name calling now. We should be working together to resolve problems. We shouldn't be name calling now. Let me touch as I come to near close. Peace, security and stability. We are a peace loving country. We learned this from KK. We are not warmongers ourselves. We want to maintain a friendly relationship with all our neighbors and the near neighbors. Great Lakes region, we are friends. We found very sour relationships. We don't want to get them any worse. We want them to be better. Sadiq. East African community, West African community, we don't want military coups on this continent. I dare say so, and I say it with firmness. This is a constitutional democracy. Civilians choose the government, not the army. The one who controls keys to the armory does not own those guns. Those guns belong to the citizens. Those guns should never be used on citizens. Those guns are meant to protect citizens from aggressors from outside Zambia. I say so with firmness. We don't want the military crews of Niger one opposition leader here, when there was a coup in Niger, in Gabon, you were saying, next is Zambia. Are you normal? Does your brain work? Go and live in, 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 in Mali. Go and live in Central African Republic. Go and live in Chad. Our own men and women are fighting in Central African Republic under the UN peacekeeping force. That's our duty to society, to the world. We've sent our own children in harm's way there to stabilize Central African Republic because instability anywhere is instability everywhere. We've seen it. The war in Ukraine is affecting us. The war in Gaza, Israel is affecting us. How can anyone who wants to be a leader 
emulate a coup in Niger. What country do you want to lead? Once a country degenerates into a military coup, it will never come out. It will be on and off, on and off. Try and live in those environments. Zambia is admired. Let me say to you, Zambians, those of us who travel outside there, the first thing people know, you are HH from Zambia, and say, thank you, sir, for maintaining peace, security and stability, for investment, for economy, for jobs. I want to urge my colleagues in the opposition, do not emulate a violent way of taking over a government. It will come back to bite you, and it will bite you very badly. Women and children are suffering in Ukraine there. I went to Ukraine myself, together with six other presidents on the African continent. Never happened before. A conflict in Europe. Africa is helping to solve that conflict. First time in the history of our global politics. It doesn't mean the Europeans are not capable of solving that problem. It means everybody understands we are one. When we were evacuating our students from Ukraine, thank you, German ambassador, Poland, German, EU assisted us a lot to save our people who found themselves in a war situation in, in, in Ukraine. So, you know, colleagues, journalists, some things when they are given to you, don't write them. If someone says, we expect a coup in Tanzania, in Zambia, in Botswana, don't write it. Don't write that story. Don't write it. Tell them to publish it on their own phone. It's not a joke. We need a safer world. We don't need a polarized world. We want a safer world to allow resources not to go for war, to support war, but to support development, investment, trade, economic growth. We're serving as chair of the Sadiq Troika, politics, defense, and security. We're doing our job. Our men and women, Vice President, you know, are serving in Cabo Delgado. They're in harm's way. Zambian citizens, your cousins, your brothers, are serving in northern Mozambique. That's our duty to society, to the region. And I'm proud, we're proud of them. We're proud of them. We stabilize Cabo Delgado, we stabilize Eastern Province. We stabilize Malawi. We stabilize our region. Then we can focus on trading with each other, investing with each other. Resources are limited. We can't be stretching resources on war. Kaunda taught us that. We walk Kaunda's road. Colleagues, let's be serious a bit. So we don't support war, we don't support instability anywhere. That's the position of the country. Your foreign policy, so you know, is anchored on two legs only. One, peace, security, stability. Two, economic diplomacy. That's all. Chuck. Woman. And we will participate in securing peace and stability in all parts of the world, starting with our own country, in the neighborhood, Sadiq, Africa, the world. We will vote at the UN against war, and we are voting against war. With other peace-loving nations of the world, we stand shoulder to shoulder to those. I wanted to explain this because I see social media when we vote at the UN against war, others post, no, 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 you see, HH is an imperialist stooge. What do you mean? The day you become president, if God allows it, you will understand the obligation you carry as head of state. 
It's not something you joke about because people die. Dislocation, refugees. We wish our colleagues in Congo, Congo DRC, peace, stability. We've seen a lot of them are entering our country already. Kasumbalesa there. Every day, as I speak, they're entering our country because they're feeling insecure there. If Congo blows up, we blow up here in some way. We share 1,900 kilometers of a border with Congo. That's not something you play around with. I see what people post on social media. Let's be responsible. Let's restrain ourselves. We we'll work hard to secure, to support peace in Eastern Congo, peace in Cabo Delgado, peace everywhere. But charity begins at home. Our neighbors, Congo dear. Post elections, we work to support behind the scenes without you knowing. Zero two zero three. Just much that. Foreign minister is not here. Two days ago, 0102, that's when we were having, receiving the envoy from Congo there, from President Shiseke, 0102, to compare notes on how we can help to keep law and order in that country. That's what goes on when you are asleep. That's what the presidency means. It's not something you joke around, you play with, you try, you're lucky. If you have no principles, you break. But in breaking, you put your citizens and others in the harm's way. Zero, one, zero, two. And that's normal. I won't tell you the content of the conversation. But it's to make sure that we remain positive, the Congolese remain safe. And we'll do everything, whatever we can. Partners around the world. It's a difficult situation there. But there, our hearts are with them. Our minds are with them. Whatever else we can do. Sadika sent troops there. We managed to get, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is not here. We managed to negotiate my meeting with Secretary General Guterres in Abu Dhabi just 15 days ago was to talk about Congo and other areas and I asked the Secretary General can we extend the UN mission there to allow for election before, during, after elections and I'm proud to say to you following that meeting in my role as Troika leader but also as a citizen of Zambia and president of this country yourself and the UN has extended their mission, peace mission, up to December 2024 in Congo. So while you elected us to run your affairs, invariably you put us in a position to also work with the global community. That's a responsibility that Kaunda told us as he hosted the ANC here of South Africa, as he supported Mozambique, we lost lives. As he supported the Zimbabwe liberation struggle, Angolan liberation struggle. So we continue. In a different way, of course. But walking the same path. Let me stress, called citizens, as we close, delivery for the people is what we were elected to do. Ministers, PSCs. There's nothing saying in the government, that's how we do things. You want to change something? You stand in the way and say, no, 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 we don't do things like this in government. Why hasn't the economy improved since you have been doing things in a certain way? We must do things in a way that delivers value. Simple, straight. Delivery is what we're here for. We understand the situation citizens are going through. We understand. But this is a process we have to go through. 
and will do everything possible to support the social side during this transition as we cross the flip the coin to focusing on economic growth. As I said, we expect 2024 a higher growth than 2023. In many countries, they are failing to achieve even 0.5 percent. It's difficult. The world is going through very serious problems, inflationary pressures, cost of living, but we're trying our best. We work with you diligently to do that, to ameliorate the challenges. We are confident that we shall overcome. And when we do, no more debt crisis. No more. And I want to appeal to the citizens of Zambia, as you go to vote in 2026, reflect. Don't take us back to the mess. Look at the price we paid now. At that point, it doesn't matter. It's not about who is a cousin, who is an ethnic group member, because I see people are parroting ethnicity now as the only weapon for elective office competition, ethnicity. Can you eat ethnicity? Number, they, do they share with you? When they do corruption, do they share with you what they take? They just buy Rolls Royce. Why would a normal person drive a Rolls Royce in this country? How do you say it's a Rolls Royce? What is the tire, price of a tire for a Rolls Royce? Then you know there's a, there's a problem. That's why I don't want the Gulf Stream. How can I go to the EU meeting in the Brussels in the latest jet called the Gulf Stream, costing so much money? Then I go in the meeting and I'm asking for budget support. So they look at me, ah, cheap <laughs> Honestly, it's not a joke. Some things we should never do. Some things we should never do, citizens. Self-control. If a minister doesn't drive a VX, is it, does, does that remove a ministerial value in him or her? You go to England, see what the ministers drive there. Go to the UK, go to Germany, see what the ministers drive there. Why are you pretending here? That's, that's just a piece of metal. I'm talking about cost control. I'm talking about moving money from a $250,000 VX to a car worth $50,000. We'll have saved $200,000. $200,000 we can send more kids to college. We can sink more bohos, Madam Masebo, for your clinics. I must confess, inside my colleagues, this issue of VXs was making colleagues whisper against me. And I'm aware, they think I'm not aware, I'm aware. I'm very much aware. But you can't move me on those things. Go and buy your own VX. Make yourself happy. After you knock off, you, 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 no one restricts you. I said it in that room. Minister wants a new VX. Army commander wants a new VX. Secretary of the cabinet wants a new VX. Mayor wants a new VX, Deputy Mayor wants a new VX. You put those figures together, soon you'll be talking about $50 million. Let us be prudent as a government, as individuals at the family level. Buy a tractor instead of buying a VX. Using your own money, buy a tractor to bring you more money. You buy a VX, boom, 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 two liters. Boom, 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 five liters. Calculate the money. It will never come back. I'm talking about prudence. At the government level, at the private level. Certainly, that's what I know myself.
you want to hear my personal story, that's what I know. And it works. One day my son comes from school, college, he said, ah, Daddy, I went to lunch with my friend, he was driving a hammer. So I said, sit down here. I said, uh-huh, so what's the story? He tells me, so I said, what's the color? He says, how was it? Did you go inside? He said, yes. How is it inside? Oh, leather seats, very nice. He said, ah, why don't we buy a hammer here? I said, do you have money to buy a hammer, Sunny? What do you want to use it for? To show off, to show off to who? That boy was younger. Today, he's grown up a little bit. He sees friends driving a hammer, he comes and tells me, Daddy, there was one boy posing with the hammer. I told him, you, you're wasting money. You should have bought a cattle, you should have bought a tractor here. <laughs> now he's lecturing to his friends. We can change this country. We can change this country. Attitudes, tests, pretense, citizens. We can do better. Whatever I've said here today, we can do 10 times more, 20 times more. And this country will be a better place to live in. And no one has to leave this country as a refugee. No. Unless it's normal, they're going to school, they're going to do Makwebo, they're going to, then they come back home. That's what we want. That's our aspiration. We share this with the Vice President and the Cabinet. I must say to colleagues, citizens, there's no escaping hard work. We have to work hard. Work after work and more work is the only way. There's no magic. Ask the developed countries. Hard work. If you haven't traveled, you think other countries became rich because they were lucky. There's nothing like that. Hard work. I urge Zambians, let's work hard. Unity is important. I'm listening. I'm following. Resources are being distributed to all parts of Zambia. We are proud of that. If someone wants to run a narrative that there is a favored region or regions, other regions are not favored, where? Tell us. Give us the facts. Where? Which region is discriminated? Which region is not receiving CDF? Tell me. Tell us. We'll address that issue. Let us keep our country one Zambia, one nation, and one people. Let us unite our people. Church, political parties, civil society, professional bodies. Let us work to unite our country. Keep our country peaceful, stable, secure. Then we focus on development. Epela. If Fimbifia Shala, we can deal with them. But the risking risk to the country to disintegrate because you want to be president because someone who you said can never be president is president today. That's the only issue that is out there. That's the only issue. Because you said some regions can never produce a president and you believed, you made yourself believe that that was correct. Compete. Don't use that sort of uncivilized mind to disturb the country. Well, go and tell the students that you will take away free education. Go and tell the widow that you will take away free education when you come into office. Let's see what answer you get. Go and tell a university student that you will withdraw meal allowances. See what answer you get. Go and tell the men and women who are serving in Central African Republic in harm's way that the new government, UPND government, has given us full allowances. Now you're going to withdraw those allowances. Go and tell them that. And see what they will say to you. 
Ethnicity is a thing of the mind. We are one people. This country has matured. It will not listen to an ethnic agenda. This country will listen to complaints about millimil. It's a fair complaint. Complaints about exchange rate. It's a fair complaint. Complaint about, you know, if you like, employment. It's a fair complaint. And we're working on those issues. Don't hide. We know because you said the HH will never be president. This is the most balanced cabinet compared with the last cabinet. Compared. One from Western Province, if that matters to you, for some of you. One from Southern Province. I've removed it. I don't have to explain. Another Zambian has come in. One Zambian goes out. Nyoni comes in. What's the problem there? So what is the issue there? Parroting stories, no, 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 no. We've been segregated. The assumption being made because they were segregating people, they think that the new Don government is also going to segregate people. No, we are different. And for me, when I was appointing ministers, I knew that this day will come. Someone will try and use that as an issue. We are way ahead of people. And there are not many. It's a small clique who believes the government must be controlled by them only and no one else. So where is one Zambia, one nation, one people? Where is equity there? Use other arguments. Don't use this one. Honestly speaking, use other arguments. And we'll listen to you. I want to wish Zambians compliments of the season happy new year have a good Christmas please do it responsibly drive carefully drive carefully don't cause unnecessary accidents thank you thank you have a good Colleagues, I promise that before I go, work being done will get results. Here's what my colleague, Minister of Mines, has brought me. A Mopani transaction has been signed. Good news. Mopani, KCM, Shaft 28, 1.5 billion in Shaft 28, all of that stuff. Copper will be back where it should be. 
should have been and more so today in confirming what has already been announced the Mopani transaction is, has a cover value of 1.5 1.1 billion dollars that's a cover value which will be split between equity and debt in some proportions i won't bore you with that but more importantly this is the first transaction since the 1990 that your government first time give me something else first time that we have been able to agree a share split the investor 51 percent the government your government 49 percent give me another transaction that is in that range that's what you will see going forward with 40 tenements we've invited the americans the germans the chinese the japanese the french the italians to partner with us and we'll be looking for 50 50 split these are greenfields this is an old mine which was messed up messed up by those who make noise every day hmm? so Ubuntu. Hey. Hmm. honestly but for the new transactions we're looking for a range of 40 60 up to 50 50 50 or 40 60 within there deliberately there you are now 49 51 percent second issue we are going to work with the colleagues here to for the country to be involved in the commodity trading i don't want to complicate the conversation commodity trading you remember me marco there's money in commodity trading so we mine one two we commodity trade three we are working on a JV for value addition for processing of our minerals. You must clap for that. That's where the value is. We're using this as a test case, a partnership at three levels. We want to do that everywhere. But we are not going to break and create issues where the transactions were already done. We negotiate. But the new ones, we say to our partners, this is what we're asking you to partner us with. We can negotiate, but not beyond this and that. That's the government you elected. We've negotiated. And this, I sent a signal to my colleagues in the negotiation team committee of ministers technical committee that we have to redo to do what was done wrongly the pf agreed to a value transaction value on mopan of 1.5 billion dollars liability we took on a liability of 1.5 billion dollars wrong transaction right I'm, I'm not joking it's not a joke we have now been able to negotiate this liability down from 1.5 billion dollars to 400 million dollars so. that's a transaction happening there my dear colleagues this is only the beginning the government will work hard Take it to the cabinet. We don't want transactions to take longer. It costs money, time, money, opportunity costs. That's my basic training. Longer you take to do things, you don't incur just these numbers. The opportunity cost in this transaction is more than $1.5 billion. 
if you want is more than 1.1 billion dollars 1.5 less 1.1 uh, less 400 is 1.1 billion it's more than that because we are not producing enough we're not employing enough we are not giving enough contracts the opportunity cost is a lot more the true cost is higher than this so there you are we committed to saving you to the best of our ability but the point i wanted to make secret to the government transactions are taking too long we should involve the private sector to help us government you see these guys in government they have a problem we have a problem we the habit is that the government is the owner of this process no the owner is the people and the private sector people who are capable to work with us I have directed you, sir. Coming January, I want to see Zambian private professionals working with us on transactions like this, so that they can help us close transactions quickly. That's why we sent them to school. So we need to see that, so that they can assist us, even negotiate better deals. We don't have all the wisdom ourselves. We can borrow and pick from them. Minister of Mines and team, I know you receive a lot of sticks and blows. But I want to thank the committee of ministers who have been working on this transaction, the technical committee, Secretary of the Cabinet, who chaired it, many advisors, including Zambians, although they were being resisted. And I invite some Zambians, I don't want to mention their names, some of them are seated here that will be asking you to help us when we have transactions. I know someone who knows, but there have been a slowdown. This time I will make sure that you are on some transactions. Legally, nothing illegal here. We are not an illegal government, but we need the skills. So congratulations to you, sir. I know you, need, you didn't sleep, you can take a nap after this one. <laughs> I had already wished Zambians Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, do it responsibly, don't drive, drunk and drive, don't pick quarrels, love each other, support a neighbor who needs support, you know that neighbor things change tomorrow you're in a position to support them believe me tw tw 10 years from now they'll be in a position to support you or someone that's how it works that's a problem we have with some Zambians because they they said these people will never form government so now to accept that the very people they said will never form government are in government is difficult it's becoming difficult and they're making things difficult for everybody not necessary I can tell you, things change. Today's child of a rich family, father and mother, the child they admonish next door will be like them 10 years from now. Things reverse themselves. So we must be responsible when you are able to help. Help when you are able to help. That's how God works life. Over time, things equalize, they harmonize. God bless you all. God bless Zambia. Thank you very much. I'm ready to sign. Chris, I'm ready to sign. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Excellency. I think uh, the President has given a very detailed report to the nation that has showed progress from what we have been able to achieve this year. And I think you all agree with me that he deserves another round of applause, a big hand. For 23 years, this bill has been going in and out of Parliament People have been skirting around it, regime after regime, 
promises have been made, uh, pronouncements have been made, but nobody has been able to bring it to fruition and sign it into law. Today, the 22nd of December, we bid farewell to the bill as it ceases to be a bill and today becomes law as His Excellency the President signs the access to information into law. So members of the press, we are very aware, especially on behalf of the citizens of Zambia, that you have been advocating for the access to information bill to be signed into law, and the President promised that as soon as it is brought before him, he will assent to it and sign, and as announced earlier, we are now witnessing a historical event where His Excellency the President is signing the ATI into law. From henceforth, this is no longer a bill, but access to information in Zambia is law. May I invite um, the Honorable Minister of Information and Media to join His Excellency there just to show the access to information uh, to the people. Honorable Minister, sir, if you may join His Excellency. Member, Please. Oh. So symbolically, the access to information is a document that the people of Zambia have asked for. It affects the people of Zambia, it affects government, it affects civil society, it affects all of us. And today we have witnessed a historical event and it has been signed into law. Uh, symbolically, we can see the picture being taken there representing the government and civil society, meaning that the people and its government have signed unto themselves the law on access to information. A big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. This clearly shows that as a new dawn administration led by yourself, sir, we have nothing to hide. And therefore, the people of Zambia are free because, as you always state, Your Excellency, we are their servants and they are our bosses. At this point in time, I'd like to invite questions. Uh, we shall take three questions at a time. When you stand, please state your name and the media organization from which you come, but also stick to one question. I have not seen Uncle Frank around here, so I don't expect someone to say as a rider to that question. So you stick to one question, give us your name and the media organization. So we'll take the first three, uh, if I can see some hands. I'll take this lady here first. You can come up here. Just state your name and uh, the media organization from which you come. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. My name is Virginia Chilongo from Movie TV. Um, Mr. President, after taking office in 2021, your plan for your first year was dedicated towards stabilizing the economy. 
For the second year, your plan was dedicated to unlocking resources. But for your third year specifically, what is your plan? I thank you. Thank you. Um, hold on, I want to spread as much as possible. Yes, you. Good afternoon, Your Excellency, and compliments of the season to you and the first lady and the first family. My name is Paul Shingongo. I work for KBN TV, also known as Kenmark Broadcasting Network. I just have one question for you, Excellency, which I want to begin by commending you, first of all, by being consistent in holding the press conferences quarterly. As per your promise, these are important engagements for us as the press. My question, a certain section of society are worried and uh, concerned over your working relationship with um, our honor the Vice President. There are indications, Your Excellency, that you are sidelining the Vice President. Others have wondered why the Vice President is rarely sent on assignments outside the country even just presidential inaugurations, we see Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Kakubo, being the one sent to those assignments. It had to take Secretary to Cabinet to also convince the Zambians that even when you are outside the country, she's the acting president. He had to call for a whole press conference just for that. Your Excellency, I would love to hear your comment on this, as this has worried many Zambians. I thank you. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. My name is Mugwe Majilala from Millennium Radio. Um, there has been concern from um, the civil society, the section of the church, and uh, opposition political party leaders that um, your government, um, that under your government rather, democratic space has been shrinking and that um, your government has been using institutions of government to annihilate uh, opposition political parties and in this case the patriotic front where um, two factions have emerged. What is your position to these concerns and uh, what is your take in regards to um, the state of the opposition patriotic front? Thank you. We we'll allow the president to attend to those. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I have to, to, to smile. I think it's important that I smile. Um, I'm not really sure. I thought the rules of engagement were that the questions would be around the subject. Because that's why people end up writing totally different things and leaving the message of the press briefing unattended. I thought that's the rule of engagement that, that you gave. So I, I would suggest colleagues that everything has its own time. This is a time for us to report to the nation what we've been doing in the last uh, one year and before. So it will be helpful to focus on that. The next quarter you can ask maybe other questions you want, but this quarter is <laughs> so important that we invest in the issues that we embrace. It's part of the discipline, it's part of professionalism to do things like that. But because you have asked the questions, I will answer them since I'm your servant. But for the next question, please focus on a lot of things that require interrogation here that we have raised, eh? journalists. Let's not focus on superfluous issues, perceptions, views. Uh, Kaunda used to call it kachepa in the morning, kachepa at lunch, kachepa in the evening. And that's what ruled the day. I remember I was still young when you used to say that. So, um, Virginia Chilongo, 
plan for third year. Thank you very much for that very, uh, very relevant question to the subject. Our plan for this year, 2024, as I said in my speech, our speech here, the headline message is to drive growth, Virginia, to drive growth, economic growth. In the statement I talked about us being able to turn around the economy from the minus 2.8% growth to 4.3 projected this year, and we, we believe we'll be getting there, and then to bigger numbers next year. That's, that's the plan. So that we flip the coin on the assumption that we'll close the debt restructuring, which is really, really hamstrung us. Even the things that we've said here, the free education, the roads we're talking about, the other infrastructure, it's just because we're ingenious. Otherwise, we're never going to do them because basically we were a bankrupt state. Once you default on your creditors, you're sending a signal that you're bankrupt. But we have been able to do these things. But to avoid that knife edge way of living, our focus will be to grow the economy. Investments, trade, prudence, lowering the costs at which we do things in government, driving the partnership between government and the private sector, the PPDF platform I talked about, the PDU platform, Presidential Delivery Unit, making sure that we can lower the time it takes to get a water permit from Wama to irrigate. Remember, I was talking about irrigation. Lowering the time it takes to get Zema license to put up a factory. Takes too long now. Sometimes 25 months, used to. We've lowered it, okay, but we want to lower it more. To be able to give a power purchase agreement to an investor in energy quicker so that the investment takes place. Remember I talked about now implementation. We've signed so many agreements. Now we'll focus on implementation. Flip the envelope. Growth, growth, growth. For jobs, jobs, jobs. For more contracts for goods and services. You will see we are promulgating a law now. You will see it in 2024 where we want to give deliberate favor to Zambian suppliers of goods and services. Deliberately. Give them priority. You see, I'm, I'm glad you have been following the way we had structured what we are going to do. Sometimes we flip over because circumstances beyond our control, like the debt has taken longer. But that's the trust, Virginia. And we invite the support of other citizens in that space. That's our request. That is our narrative. When we do it properly, you see growth scaling to close to 5% or more. That's our agenda. We are ambitious, very ambitious, but we are held back. Thank you. I hope I've answered your question. Of course, as a consequence of the growth of the economy, you see more employment, you see more teachers, more nurses, more other people, service, but more private sector jobs. That's what our drive will be. Thank you. Paul Shingombo. Some society members are worried about the vice president, president being discriminated by the president. I don't know anything about that. That's news to me. You have to tell me what you know, which I don't know. We work within the law. The vice president has a role to, to do under the constitution. She performs that role. I know maybe partially where you are getting this narrative. It, this, this, is, this is what I call side shows. Huh? A poor. This is a side show. Honestly speaking, my friend, you are teaching me something I didn't know since I formed government. We formed government. 
her role is in the constitution. It's legislated. As the role of a former president is legislated. It's in the constitution or in the secondary laws. Every time the president is out of this country, I sign something where she is the acting president. Every single trip I take. She's here. Maybe she should answer the question. It's good she's here. And uh, I will ask her to add on, actually. The mic is there. Every time I travel, even if I'm going for a day only, I sign an instrument. Secretary of the Cabinet is there. Now you are saying it took him to explain. What do you mean? He does what the law requires him to do. So it is that smell you drive because you felt HH will never be president. That is where this is coming from. There's nothing else we are saying here. Because you are uncomfortable that somebody you didn't want to be president is president. And the only way the country will be normal is for her to be the president. That's when you feel comfortable. Those members of society who feel like that. Because everything is legal, it's there. All the instruments. Maybe Mr. Kango, you can also come and compliment my answer. Because it's necessary once I'm done. So we do this thing once and for all. When the president is out of the country, she is acting president. When she is acting president, she cannot attend parliament because she is the president that time. She cannot sit in parliament. When the president is in the country, she is the leader of government in parliament. When she is acting president, she will not sit in parliament. This is a story being parroted that uh, she is being demeaned because when the president is out, defense minister is the acting president. No. Then she nominates the defense minister, she herself, or someone else to be the leader of the house. I don't even get involved myself. It happens automatically. I don't know whether it's cabinet. Is it you who does that? It's, it's, it's her who does that. So if you have an issue with Lufuma, raise another matter. <laughs> Lufuma is a citizen of Zambia, as she is, as I am. I know one day there was someone else who was acting leader of the house. I think Lufuma was not in the country. You you would know better. Was it Jack or someone? You have a roster. You will explain a bit. So I think she will explain a bit more. I think it's important. This is really what is typical of Zambians, eh? to bring other mediocre things that really have no basis. And I repeat, mediocre things, which have no basis at all. And the speculation, the narratives that, oh, the president should only come from this region. That is the issue now. That is the only issue now. How do you think fellow citizens feel when you think that they should never produce a president? What do you think they feel? But who are you anyway? For you to be the only ones to take the president, who are you? Who are you? Which law are you using? Which constitution are you using? So that's what happens. She can't sit in the house. She delegates, as I delegate to her, she then delegates the chain continues. Right? That's what the issue, the issue of travel. <laughs> she just returned from Geneva now. Just now. I think she was speak for herself. You must have been there for 10 days or so. Maybe seven days. She will speak. She does travel. The other day she was representing me in Tanzania. The issue about the Minister of Foreign Affairs, that is his portfolio. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is the first, the two people who are faces of the country's foreign policies, the President and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is doing his function. You don't like the name Kakubo? You have a problem with that? You're asking where he was born? That's not my job. 
That is his duty. I must be strong on this matter. Because this is what goes on. And this is what occupies social media. This is, these are the narratives, divisive agendas, trying to create division inside UPND. Because there is no division inside UPND. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. UPND has chosen Kombo as the, the new president. In UPND, there's a system there. And someone now wants to say Nkombo is the one taking over from HH and not the vice president. Again, back to the smell of ethnicity. That's what it is. Let's call things by their names. This is what it is, uh, Paul. I think as a young journalist, sometimes people ask you to ask questions. You must examine the questions they ask you to ask on behalf of people. Because then you really become the one who looks a little bit bad in a case like this. Yeah? So I would, I would suggest that um, the Vice President gets a bite on this one, um, and then um, the Secretary of the Cabinet. He didn't need to explain that. I am the one who told him to explain, by the way. Paul, I'm the one who said, call a press conference. And I said to him, wave the instruments. I think you waved the instruments. You carried them, eh? Yes. So I hope this subject can be dealt with Vice President. How one of the Vice President is here. I don't read any issue. We perform our functions constitutionally. That's the way it should be. Anything else, you have to amend the constitution. You want something else? Go and amend the constitution. You are the one who make the constitutions. <laughs> Simple as that. So, so I will come to this issue just now. Let me answer the third question. Uh, children, the concern about democratic space shrinking. You know, colleagues, Chilara. Honestly, I was hammering earlier about how you couldn't go to, 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 to intercity. How I could not even use airspace myself in the opposition. I couldn't use airspace. One time I was going to Chipata, I was detained on the runway there. And I deliberately told the pilot to take off. And I said to the commissioner of police then that I will sleep on this runway. Tell me where I need a passport. Do I need a passport to come into Chipata? And there was war in those hills in Chipata. Tear gas, gunshots to stop my freedom of movement. Have you seen Panga since we took office? Have you ever seen the way a Panga looks like? You've forgotten already. Where is Chilada? Ah, where now? Honestly, Chilada. Where now? Which democratic space are you talking about that is shrinking? There are by elections that have just passed. Three of them UPND won two. I think PF won one. Everybody was campaigning freely. Before that time, I was not allowed, she was not allowed to go to a place where the vice president or president was in the vicinity. I got gunshots 10 days before elections in Chingola. We haven't forgotten. We forgive, but we don't forget. That's the rule of engagement, eh? civilized human beings. We forgive, but we don't forget. <laughs> I had to sell that car. It ripped off the door handle of the seat where I was sitting. And I was only going to church on a Sunday morning in Chingola, 10, 11 days before elections. That was no democratic space. That was no freedom of movement. So, I'm not sure what you're talking about, or oh, those co co society members. I know you're asking on behalf of the people. Again, I'll say to what I said about Paul. Sometimes refuse to ask questions in, in, on behalf of other people. Because you know it yourself. Unless you lived in a different country. People say things about this president every day. And it's a democracy. Insults. One Sean Temple, every morning, 
His job is just to insult HH. Every morning, you check every posting. It's HH, I told you, he calls me Uyundani, Uyu. <laughs> and I read. I must tell, tell Shontem, I read. But I just smile. I just laugh at it. I have more important things to do. I don't even pay attention to them. I laugh. As I told you, one of them said, the coup happened next in Zambia. I already covered that issue. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? This is, this is serious craziness. Eh? So, there is democratic space here. What you are seeing is what ha we had lost. Because we are enforcing the rule of law, now those guys who are breaking the law believe that uh, this is abnormal. What was abnormal became normal under the PF. What we are doing, which is normal is now, is looking abnormal to them. That's where the problem is. This is where the problem is. The Public Order Act is in Parliament and is being reviewed. We have taken it to court again, sorry, to Parliament the first time in 30, 40 years. We've taken, in fact, not in 30 years, since colonial time. Except, let me be correct, one Mulundika who took it, a unique person then, to court to amend one or two things. So this is the second time. And that was amended via the Supreme Court ruling. But this time, we have taken it to Parliament ourselves. But law and order is not equivalent to anarchy. Chilana, the day you become president, my friend, you realize you are responsible for both sides of the coin. Democracy and space is two sides of the coin. Where your rights end, someone else's rights start. Surely, that's natural justice. To, to go and say we are going to break shop right in town and burn it and invite people to take goods in there. And that is freedom and that democratic space. And the police know that that's what you want to do. And then you go in town and do that. It will be an irresponsible police and Home Affairs Minister. Absolutely. Let me remind the gathering here. The British government has just brought back the Public Order Act. The British government, in the last three months or so. Why? Because people were toying, toying every day. They were in the streets of London every day and breaking property, beating people. Prime Minister Sunak said, no, 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 no. This is anarchy. This is not democracy. This is not rule of law. This is nothing. This, this, is, this is anarchy. And they've now amended their laws to restrict anarchy. It's there. Check. You know, me, I scan my eyes globally, regionally, to see what's going on. So that doesn't mean the British people have taken away democratic space. The British people don't want other peace-loving citizens to be inconvenienced out of Upper Brook Street every day. Those of you who know London well, I lived in that part of London, Upper Brook Street, uh, Park Lane. Every day, toy, 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 and you can't produce. Look at South Africa. Every day, toy, 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 toy. Burning Woolworths, because the Woolworth belongs to a Jewish person, and because of the Gaza, Gaza and Israel war, you organize in the name of democratic space, you go and burn Woolworth shops. Can we afford to ban shop right ourselves? Or to ban Zambi shops? What are we doing? I thought I should spend a bit of time around there to distinguish between space, democratic space, constitutional right, and anarchy. Two sides of the same coin. Let me be also candid. When I was in opposition, maybe you've forgotten, I suffered the most. There's no politician who was alive, who was persecuted the way I was. Let me be direct today. I am the one. I am the one who got tear gassed every move. 
I'm the one who got live bullets every move. One bullet meant for me took away Joseph Kaunda. Ten hours in the morning, around police headquarters there, high court area, took out an innocent 23-year-old life. That bullet was meant for me. Joseph Kaunda. Another bullet went to Nsama Nsama. In case you have forgotten, Chilad. Through you, th that community section, that things like that. I've talked of the bullet in Chingola. I've talked of Sun FM rooftop there. I think Sun FM is here. They were there. Your colleagues were there. I had to go through the roof. There is no radio station that has been closed under us. And none will be closed. Or television stations. So, what are we saying in this society? Which country do we live in? There are by-elections that have been announced now. People filed. No problem. They will campaign. No problem. Whoever wins, that's democracy. It's okay. We lose tomorrow, we win another one. We don't have to fight. When I was in opposition, Chile, I did not allow my members to go in the streets to fight. 2015, we think our election was stolen. The first thing I did was to hold a press conference to say, you don't go in the streets. You want to be president, you can't allow your members to go in the streets and break the nation down. What are you going to lead? Which nation are you going to be? Look at how the debt is creating problems for us. Now add a country in smoke. 2016, we think our election was stolen. Again, I told my members, do not go in the streets. Actually, they thought I was not worth supporting because I was a coward. I said, oh. You think HH is a coward, then you don't know him. Then you don't know HH at all. You think you know him, you don't know him. God gave us certain things, but not fear. But it's responsibility. You don't ban your country in the name of democratic space. You go and ban Simpson building. Who is going to rebuild it? Who will compensate him? Because I asked, I went to court. I didn't go in the streets. I went to court in 2016. I was never heard against the Bill of Rights, the right to be heard. I was never heard. Our petition was never heard up to now. By the same people saying there's no democracy in space. <laughs> never heard. But I have the right to be heard. It's a Bill of Rights. Did I go in the streets? No. We just worked harder and harder. And realized where the loopholes are. We sealed them. We won the election. Today the country is peaceful. There's democracy. There's law and order. Not anarchy. Chilala, where now? So, let me ish talk about the issue of causing trouble in PF. I'm not a PF member. <laughs> I've never been PF. How can I go and cause problems in PF? I'm an outsider. Maybe this lady is doing it. She's an outsider. It is incorrect to shift one's problems to other people. Honestly speaking, PF have their own systems and processes, and they've not started today. They started a long time ago, 2014. It was mayhem to select a successor to President Sata. May he so rest in peace. There were fights. There were pangas in Kawe there. There were parallel elections there. One for ECL, one for Miles Samba. 2014 for the 2015 elections. Chilala. We were in opposition. How is it that we, we influenced? That blood, blood letting. That lady was, was PFD. She was beaten in the car with her. There she is seated peacefully there. She's not even afraid of any attack. Ask her what was happening in 2014. The election was in 2015, January, but 2014. It was mayhem in PF. That's how they select their leaders. It's not our culture. <laughs> on ours. 
I'm afraid. Don't bring the smell to me. Take it to the owners. That's their smell. It's not my smell. It's not our smell. I must also tell you something which is true. It's difficult to run an opposition party. I know it. You need discipline. You need patience. When we were in opposition, Chilara, PF took away every vice president we were appointed, they took them away. <laughs> yes, my deputy secretary general is there. He took away my national chairman. They took away vice president Simenda. Two, three, they took away vice president Capita. He's there, he's alive. He's there. Took him away. I was with him in Seoul, in Northwestern, we were touring before the 2016 election. He says to me, Mr. President, I have an emergency in Osaka. Ah, this one. I'm in Northwestern province. There's an emergency in Osaka. What's happening in Osaka? He leaves me. The next thing I hear is left me. I'm campaigning in his province and I need him the most. He defects to PF. Did you ever hear me criticizing Kapita? I simply said, I wish you well. That's my standard answer. I never pointed a finger at me. Next, who do I, I find now two, I said, let me put two vice presidents now. <laughs> one goes, one remains. <laughs> right? Who do I put? Kanisha's Banda and the GBM. <laughs> First to go, Skanisha's band. Mutenga <laughs> Next, the man who said, I will never go back to PF, Marus. Tedinje Kumarus, GBM, was gone. Did I say anything bad against Kapita, Simenda, GBM? No, standard answer. Wish you well. Maturity, understanding. You need to be, your heart must be big in opposition. Eh? Because some people can't wait, they can't be patient, they like things now. I never demonize any of my colleagues. I simply wish them well. I think the history is there, the records are there. I never pointed at people. Why are they pointing at me? I'm not Miles Samba. Mayo Samba is a PF member. The same fight that there was in 2014 between Mayo Samba and ECL is just a reincarnation of what happened in 2014. Almost. That time they split into two groups. That's what is there. So, how do I come in, my dear colleague? This is unfair, colleagues. This is incorrect. We have no business in choosing who runs PF or who runs Socialist Party, or who runs Citizens First. These are entitled to participate in politics. How they organize it, their culture, is their business, not ours, I must say. Honestly speaking, I feel we are being shortchanged, but I'm just quiet, I don't talk. Because if I talk, I will lose the time I need for debt restructuring. I will lose the time I need to fix free education, to fix CDL. That's my attitude. So I really think that uh, media, it's unfair sometimes to run these narratives. I've been watching press conferences, uh, briefings, uh, and, and you know, but if PF are fighting for succession in Chile, they must do it within the law. When they start fighting at their secretariat and beating each other, the police will move in. That not, must not be misunderstood to mean that the, the president of UPND and the Republican president is interfering. No, that's law and order. If you beat your wife, are you married? Try and beat your wife one day, the police will be there. <laughs> Go 
Could it be a about in the marital issue? Uh-uh. At that point, it becomes a breakdown in the rule of law. Simple. I think I've illustratively... Uh, let me thank you for asking this question. I think I never really had the opportunity to say, to clear the air. I hope today I've cleared the air. I also want to thank Paul for asking this, that question. Because I've been, you know, sm- smittering here, there, a bit of simmering here and there. I said, now what is the issue with these people? Am I not a citizen of Zambia to be a president? Where will I aspire for office? Where? If I can do it here. Anyone can be president of this country. Anyone. That's a law. Anyone. Vice President, I think you, it's obligatory for you to say something about the issue and Wakangwa, you have to say something. He is the head of the public sector. Mr. Thank you. You can be seated. Uh, it's better I stand here. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency, and the colleagues, cabinet, and the permanent secretaries, the media personnel. It wasn't definitely my time to say anything, but uh, I am put here because of the question that the young man um, from the media house, KB, KBF, eh? KBN, sorry, <laughs> KBN. Mr. President, I would sit down just to say you did respond that uh, these offices are controlled by law. Uh, You make a constitution and you say it's people's document. If it is people's document, it's important that you go through it. That's what I would say. Because sometimes the expectation is beyond what is provided for. I found myself in this debate, uh, Your Excellency, from a very funny angle. But I'll tell you that uh, if there is any intention to think that, uh, oh, uh, President Hakainde is not fit, it should be Nalumango, then you are wrong. Completely wrong. I am Tale Nalumango. Willingly, freely joined the UPND willingly, freely supported the president through it all. I didn't have to be booked. Just to know who your vice president is, you don't have to fight for me, because I know who I am, and I know what I want to do, and I make my own decisions. So if people have issues, with the president, come out and tell him your issues. I am capable of standing and doing that which is right in my heart and before the living God. So for now, I am the vice president. I am not the president of the Republic of Zambia. I think the president has truly described how we work. And in no single trip has the president made, because I've heard those things, no single trip has the president made outside the borders of this country when somebody else acted. I even remember, Your Excellency, there was a time we were crisscrossing almost. You were going to Congo, and I had to arrive just before. So I remain with the instruments of power. And I have copies. I am not just told. I have copies. If I knew this question would be asked, I would have come with them. (laughs) Because I keep them. They are physical, hard copy. And I have each one of them. From the first trip, the president went to New York. That was your first trip that I got. uh, You forgive my voice. I have, uh, uh, you know, some cough. So... Uh, Zambians should be able to stand for what they want, but to want to put me in the spot to be the instrument of a fight, no, I am a
también and my purpose being here i ask god ocean was man through and through it's a decision i made it's a decision i made so don't you use me for your own political fight or tribal fight in fact i stand to fight tribalism regionalism don't put me there it is uh, the president's press briefing it's not mine i need a political rally to tell you that this is wrong don't use me i know what i feel i know what i think i'm capable of making my own decisions you can't use me i am a zambian that's who i am i hope you know me a little today thank you Thank you, Mr. President, Your Honor, the Vice President, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, Senior Government Officials, Permanent Secretaries, Members of the Press, and the country at large. Mr. President, I, after we had discussed this issue, I made it very clear as to the process that goes through for delegated function. I'll just touch on it a bit for those who may not have had the opportunity to know the process. Mr. So President, each time the, pres the President is leaving the country and we are making arrangements for his travel, my office, using the Constitution, prepares a such instrument for the President to delegate his responsibilities to the Vice President. This has been done, as has been said by the Vice President and the President himself. I have done this religiously. Each and every outing, the statutory instrument is signed, and once it's signed, I make a copy available to the Vice President, and in most cases, I will even go there and give a brief on the departure and the return of the President. Mr. President, it does not end there. Once that is done, I again sign a further document which is sent to the government printers for them to produce a government gazette. This is important because this is where the public is informed. I know government gazette is not a public document, it's not a document most of us know, but it's an important document for us in government because once we've produced that, it confirms to the public what is in the statutory instrument. So I then sign necessary documents and convey the statutory instrument to the government printers and they will then print in the government gazette that her honor the vice president is acting and the president is out of the country. Now, the delegation done is for all functions and powers of the president except appointments, disappointments, and dissolution of parliament. I do not see any sidelining when you have all the functions, powers, except for those three functions. I further guided that apart from the government gazette, for those who want to see publicly whether the vice president is acting, which you can do any time, is that we make sure that the vehicle she's traveling in has a different flag. Traditionally, she flies in an ordinary Zambian flag, but when she's acting, she uses the flag that is on the right here with the president, with the frills around the flag. Yes, Mr. President, that's what we put on the vehicle. <laughs> uh, that signifies that she is acting. And we include the use of the red carpet. We, use, we also include the presence of um, service chiefs when we are at ceremonial functions. 
I just thought I would uh, say that about the delegated responsibility. The second part of it is that I honor the Vice President really has her own mandated functions according to the Constitution which she performs. Amongst them Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, the Resettlement Department, uh, Nutrition and Leader of uh, Government Business in Parliament. And at no one time has any of these functions been taken from the Vice President or she's sidelined. We have always run those functions with her. Lastly, Mr. President, is the fact that I honor the Vice President attends Cabinet and is with the President all the time and consultations are held. You can imagine she traveled from Switzerland straight from the airport into cabinet, the last cabinet meeting, and a lot of interactions and a lot of consultation. It was on Monday, Mr. President. That was Monday when we had that cabinet. Again, a lot of interaction, a lot of discussions for the good of our country. Apart from that, we had a senior, what the president is now calling a senior management meeting, where there was further consultation. Again, I honor the vice president was there to guide all of us who are called to that meeting. These meetings always happen. And um, from my point, my job requires to have a president and a vice president, and I cannot do without both of them, and the Constitution clearly states. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Leonide, Mazinde, Your Excellency, in the interest of time, permit me to take the last three questions, since we've been seated here long enough. Uh, I'll take um, Brian here. You can come. Mr. President, good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for the access to information bill. Um, as uh, I want to believe, every giant in the country is very happy. Uh, Mr. President, this year has been a very tough year for Zambians. Uh, the cost of living has been very high. What assurance do you have for Zambians that 2024 is going to be a different year in that regard? Thank you. Uh, okay. The two of you, uh, Darius and Sharon. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Sharon Kalimbula from Times of Zambia. I'll take you back a little this year because the question is similar to what Virginia asked. 2022, 2023 rather, for the United Party for National Development Administration, it declared it a year of uh, reducing rigidities or bottlenecks. In this regard, the Constituency Development Fund has been increased for the past two years, this year inclusive, and is expected to increase in the future. But then the disbursement of the resources and the implementation of some of the projects have delayed and have been attributed to the bottlenecks or rigidities, like you like to call it. How would you rate the implementation or the fulfillment of your core to reduce these rigidities in 2023. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Darius Jonia from Diamond TV. Mr. President, we have seen and heard Finance Minister Dr. Stubekom Sukotwane make assurances on interventions to minimize the volatility of the quarter. But it has kept performing badly. Mr. President, is there hope of the local currency ever appreciating against major convertibles? Thank you. 
allow the president to attend to this. Th thank you very much to the questions. Most appreciated, um, my colleague friend from ZNBC. Um, 2024, the cost of living has been high. Could we see some improvements? I think I spent some time articulating the link here in this, which, and I deliberately spent time, deliberately. So I can only refer you to what I said already in today's messaging, right here, that um, because we damage the economy, ourselves, ourselves as a country, let's leave who was there, we know who was there, but that's not the issue. And pressures that we face, our duty is to continue working on those pressures, correctional services, FRIA, aligned millers, we push that agenda quite a lot and we'll continue pushing it, my colleague, so that we do increase the production. I, I labor, belabor that point earlier in the day um, and that we also mitigate the imported inflation aspect, imported, meaning the pressure for food from, let's, let's be specific, Congo, Malawi, and other neighbors. And uh, the solution for us is not smuggling, is not, uh, if you like, shutting the borders. The solution is to structure the markets, like I said, with Congo, the place and order. Uh, the solution is to increase production. That's why National Service and others, let me put it here, the President is the Commander-in-Chief by law. Earlier you heard me say that no one who has kissed the armory has a right to use the armory and shoot at people. No one. Only the Commander-in-Chief can decide that on behalf of the people. So, but what we are now saying to our men and women in uniform, we, the Commander-in-Chief has called them to assist in reconstructing the economy. That is what is done in other countries. Which countries? Egypt, Tanzania next door, Rwanda. That's why you see National Service building bridges, uh, Army building bridges. The Army are just doing a couple of bridges in the Northern Corridor right now. But more important to produce food. And you see the irrigation, correctional services, uh, doing a lot of irrigation and national service is deliberate because the chief, um, the, the commander in chief, has asked them to do that in peace times, without them forgetting their role as military men and women. So it's deliberate again. So it's all to help produce more food, move towards 10 million tons of maize, as an example, and then stabilize the price of maize. The call for you citizens to produce just one hectare. I'm repeating what I said just one hectare and be more productive. Keep some for your own need, sell the other. Supply side will benefit. Credit window, continuing with FISIP but cleaning it up. There was a lot of cheating in FISIP, eh? I'll be the first one to admit. A lot of cheating there. Non-existent human beings were receiving fertilizer. Today you distribute FISIP fertilizer, tomorrow it's all in the market, it's being sold. And some of it, unfortunately, will be sold to Mozambique, to Malawi, to Congo. Fellow citizens are doing that. So we're working on all those measures. One of the measures I didn't talk about today is that all fiscal beneficiaries in 2024 have to sell their excess maize to the FRA. If they don't sell to FRA, they will be removed from this fiscal list. You agree, isn't it? They'll be removed because they end up selling maize illegally to neighboring countries and creating a pressure here. But that maize they produce, to be honest, technically it belongs to the government because the fertilizer and seeds came from the government. So essentially there was a lapse in the system. Now we are tightening the system that they must sell to the FRI. 
so that the strategic reserves can benefit from them. They don't want to sell to Epare, they must raise their own money to buy fertilizer and seed. That's discipline, isn't it? So when you hear them complain next year, you must remember this press briefing that that is by intention. Because some of them, like the minister, is the minister northern here? It's not here. Some of them in Mpulungu in Bala were selling green maize to the Tanzanians. They're still in the field. They're selling it. No, we want to sell to Tanzania properly. Tanzania must place an order with us. And I've shared this with my fellow colleagues, presidents. And we're happy to do that. But first we have to feed our own people and stabilize the prices. I think that would be generally my answer, except the big one, the debt. Where is my friend who asked that question? When the debt is restructured, remember the numbers I was giving you, it will now create some headroom for us, including the pressure on the kwacha will come down including us being able to grow the credit window, put more money there and for irrigation. So those are the measures. There is no other way. I know I hear what people are saying. You know you can sell sewage light. You know you make 20 billion dollars in selling sewage light. Those are stories for the bar. <laughs> Those are stories for the streets. Uh, the streets are, uh, 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 people normally in the streets, uh, because they're not intoxicated, but in the bar, because then they are high, eh? they, they say anything there, anything goes. We're aware of that sugulite issue, we're aware of the emeralds issue. I've said it before, the minister is there, we're putting measures to get value from the emeralds more than including such like if you may know the minister there is conducting a mapping of the such light area am i right minister so that we can now exploit it legally and properly including marketing it you saw me at the jewel of africa visiting the factory you saw me not long ago it's all steps leading towards us now looking at the value of emeralds, semi-precious stones to our economy. 2024, remember, who asked me the question, Virginia? Those are the issues we're looking at, expanding the economy, bringing more value from different resources that we have, including emeralds, including switch light, including uh, lithium. That minister just put in a policy statement that no one will mine lithium and export the raw material, no one. I said it earlier, but of course you couldn't maybe connect the dots. So in Mapatizia now, where our citizens discovered lithium, I must confess, we didn't discover the lithium. It was our citizens who discovered lithium on their own in Mapatizia. So is the gold in Kassenseli. It's our citizens. It's our citizens in Impika who have discovered gold. You should ask the question, why? Because we have not been exploring, we have not been spending money on exploration. Now we are. Now we are. And I, I think I covered it earlier. So there's a lot that's going on, uh, my dear colleague, uh, ZNBC. A lot. And we just have to work together. But remember the 2000s. We had to go through this pain. And let's not allow, again I repeat, let's not allow to, to, to regress, to degrade, to reverse to this uh, negativity of debt mountain. Um, Sharon, CDF increase but uh, rigidities, performance, I talked about it earlier, that we have to improve continually the performance of CDF. The problem is not CDF money. The problem is absorption. The problem is, it's a learning curve, remember. People are shocked that they have 30 million quarter in the constituents. You multiply that by the number of constituencies in the province. For the first time, there's so much money in the constituency. There's a bit of a shock there. But from where I sit and my training, that's the shock we need. We need that shock, Sharon. And then people quickly now 
begin to respond as they are now. There was an audit done on CDM. I think you've seen it. Eh? If you haven't seen it, it's there. It's picking issues there. We're following through those audit uh, issues. In addition, we're amending the law. I, I said earlier to remove the rigidities, procurement to allow local procurement, local companies instead of companies. That's what I said earlier on in Lusaka and Copper Belt. Two, two regions only were doing work in the constituents, Copper Belt and Lusaka. Now we want contracts to be given to people in the constituencies. We have had to amend the law. We're amending the law. Little things, glitches. I'm not happy myself. I want to confess to you because you are my bosses. I'm not happy. We're slow. We're too slow there. We must do it much quicker. We shouldn't be sitting on things that we can change. So that's the, that's the issue. But also, you, I did mention to you that yesterday I signed laws, including the amendment to the Public Procurement Act, which was making it difficult for the constituents, the districts, for the constituencies. Let me change the English for the districts to adjudicate on, con on contracts for the constituencies much quicker. There were rigidities and co contradictions. So the Minister of Justice, thank you very much, and your team, and uh, sector ministers for moving to amend those laws. I talked to the Public Procurement Act. I talked to the Public Private Partnership Act, so which I signed yesterday again. So all those have been amended to facilitate now unlocking the rigidities. But we'll continue. This checklist, Sharon, my dear friend, today you can sit and I can probably call you a friend. When we were still in opposition, I wouldn't, because you, you'd be beaten outside by the thugs, by the party thugs. Um, but you have followed us from opposition. We've remained consistent. The things we've been saying. So, but we've amended the laws now. You will see a pickup of speed, but also precision and priorities. I must say, colleagues here, you can't put money without priorities. The priorities for CDF is education, is health, is water supply and sanitation. People need water. It is basic infrastructure, it's agriculture. That's why there's maintenance capacity being developed there. Then, of course, there's women funds there, youth funds, there are some grants there, there are some loans there. I think the CDF loan, anyone from local government here? It's the lowest, I think it's 5%. Secret recovery, it's 5%. You go and get a CDF loan, small loans for a saloon, a loan for a barber shop, a loan for a welding shop, because we must take care of our people there at that level. It's five percent only. Where would you get money at five percent? Not any. So, but again, ZMBC, Zanis, just take take rounds, go around, go around and do this field work and and, and bring this information. Huh? Diamond, Prime. By the way, I'm fighting a, an issue in government now, and I'm fighting legally but also by policy and conviction. There's no reason when a government team is moving around, why not carry the private media as well? Because the private media will angle a story in a different way. So why are we resisting them? Which money are we using? It's a public money. There's government departments. But who is public? It's a private media as well. That's their money. So we can get a test of a different story from a different angle. And by the way, viewers like seeing different uh, stations. Eh? So that is the fight I'm having with the Secretary of the Cabinet and other people. It's a health fight. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. That we're exchanging blows and no, no, no. It's a debate. I believe when the President travels, he must also carry the private media as he carries the public media. So the story can be taught from all angles. CDF is a game changer. Sharon, I, 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 I rigidities, I detest. They stand in the way of development. We have to dismantle them. 
Darius. Forex volatility. Who the coach improved? Darius, I spent time. Who is Darius? I spent time on this matter. Uh, Debt, I explained how it's impacting on the foreign exchange, on inflation. Uncertainty breeds instability in the market. I don't want to talk like my true training, because I will lose people around here. A price is driven by many factors. Forex is a price. The dollar quasha exchange rate is a price. In a simple language, it's a price. The price gets affected by real movements of goods and services, ex export you know, activity, bringing in revenue on the supply window of foreign exchange to mitigate the demand window for foreign exchange. But it also works on sentiments, on fears. Currently, what you're seeing is a fear that we will not close the debt restructure. We may not close the debt restructure. I am saying here, we will close the debt restructure. So the markets must be calm. But the markets want to see delivery, like they've seen on Mobani. They've seen a delivery on Mobani. Now, this money going in Mobani, you're going to see more activity, more production, more revenues. That's the way it works. We just need to manage. We, we, we're doing very well, but the delay in concluding, which is not our control, under our control, we've done everything. That's why the IMF board two days ago passed, we passed the test, the World Bank board yesterday. Again, you can see there were notes coming. This note you saw here was from our colleagues in Washington. I asked much to call our colleagues in Washington. They didn't want us to raise the matter here because they have a period within which the board meets. And then anyone who has an objection has a couple of hours to raise objections. Governance, eh? You raise an objection uh, and you are given uh, how many hours, brother? Six hours. The board meeting resolved unanimously in our favor. Networking. Friends who understand what we are going through here, what we are doing. Like the IMF board was unanimous. It doesn't happen no more. They are in Washington. They are voting unanimously for you here. There's work behind that. You don't see it, but there's a lot of work. So we were advised that uh, as the press briefing is taking place, the six hours will elapse because of the time zone difference. The six hours will elapse there. I think the six hours have elapsed, and we have announced it here. So all those are positive measures that Darius if they felt that the debt restructuring, remember they are tied to the debt restructuring, which is part of our economic restructuring. If they felt that it would not happen, the IMF board would have not approved the $187 million, which takes us to half a billion dollars out of the $1.3 billion. And we passed all the tests. We've done our part. We are confident the debt restructuring will close. And it has an effect. And the foreign there are things that are beyond our control. In our field, we call them exogenous variables. Endogenous variables, those under our control, we are dealing with. But those outside our control, we can only lobby, network, negotiate. That's why I met President Macron in Dubai. That's why I met the Vice Premier of China. That's why we are in touch almost all the time. <laughs> Vice President, one day this social media people almost got me in trouble with my wife. You know, Kristalina, the IMF managing director. We're growing to be very good friends. So every time I'm going out to this meeting, they see Kristalina coming to greet me, hug me, I hug her. So they posted, ah, Vamuchinta, trouble I am bad. <laughs> They are inciting my wife to riot <laughs> when I'm just doing my job. Truly, one of our agendas, that's why you see the Zambia rating has gone up, is to create friendships in the positive sense. There's a new World Bank president. Before when we came in, there was Maupas. Now there's Ajay Banga. 
Maupas became our very good friend. Now, Aje, first time we met in Paris in June, now Aje and I are close buddies. That's my job. So I told you I'll be the chief marketing officer. The typical Zambian, every friendship, you read something else which is not there. Uh-uh, Econa man. Don't bring trouble in my house. <laughs> so these are colleagues who are cultivating relationships, very professional. That's why even before the board meeting met, we already knew that we've done our part and we'll pass the test. We passed the test. You know? So, Darius, we continue doing what we can. Those things beyond our control, we continue networking. We continue lobbying. And that's why I said earlier on, on the date, for example, we expect the church, all churches, all political parties, all civil society, all media colleagues, we must sing the same song. There's no benefit in the delays in the debt restructuring to anybody, unless you're a witch. Honestly, unless you're a witch. Luckily, I don't fear witchcraft myself, but I know people are wicked. Some people are wicked, wishing the country ill. I think we should go home. We'll end our day. And thank you, Excellency. It remains now to only but thank you for the elaborate report you have given your bosses, the people of Zambia, through the media. Uh, I think um, we've ended the year on a good note. And I would like to take the opportunity now to invite the House and your Excellency to be upstanding as we sing the national anthem. Nation anthem, please. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you in a very special way.
For this time you accorded us to listen to the New Dawn's administration's agenda from yesterday, today, and their vision for tomorrow. This press conference, Heavenly Father, was a testament to the fact that the leaders are not oblivious to the challenges that the citizens are facing and that they are doing everything in their power to address them. In their quest, Heavenly Father, to provide holistic development to this nation, we pray that you continue providing them with your wisdom and the much-needed unit of purpose. We pray that you unite us together as a country so that we may live in a country that we all desire to be in. That is a country that is holistically developed. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we leave this place, you send us away with your blessings. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and give thanks. Amen. May we be, remain upstanding as we allow His Excellency the President and our honor the Vice President to make exit.